Yo, 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 I am back with another explanation video for trial paper. This time I'm doing mathematic paper, right? This is Kertas Satu and it's the MRSM paper, okay? So we only have how many days left? I think 10 days left until SCBM. As I'm recording this video, there's 10 days left, lah, all right? So that's why I will go through another mathematic paper, okay? This is the MRSM, lah, paper one for trial 2023. Let's begin. So the formula we can skip. Okay, this is the question one. So number one, they want us to evaluate this whole thing. All right, first of all, you can use your calculator, right? So just use your calculator to help you. But you have to know which one to press first, right? So definitely we have to do the bracket one and we have to solve this inside bracket first, okay? So negative seven over 10 is negative 0 0.7. Plus 1.2, you can use your calculator to help you. Just press negative 0 0.7 plus 1.2. Alright, my calculator is giving me uh 1.1. So you can just write it there, 1.1. And then close bracket, divide 0 0.7. And now you can press 28 times 1.1. .1. Uh, I mean, yeah, 28 times 1.1. Right? And then answer, divide 0 0.7. Okay, wait, why my calculator? Wait, press. Oh, I see up the can. Actually, this one, when you press negative 0 0.7 plus 1.2, it's uh, 0 0.5. Yeah. I see up. So this is 0 0.5. And then you just press 28 times 0 0.5. And then un uh, equal and then answer divide 0 0.7. Okay, my calculator give me 20. So A, B, C, D, C is your answer. Right? This one quite easy. Lah. Okay, you can just use your calculator. Okay, next question. What is the highest common factor of the following terms? You need to understand what is the meaning of highest common factor. Okay, fact, uh, in Basam Layu, we call it facto sepunya terbesar. So what does it mean by facto sepunya terbesar? Facto, factor. What does it mean by factor? It means x square y, y square, x, y, z. You have to think about what is the uh, number that uh, okay, how do how to say how to explain this? Uh, what is the common thing that I can divide? Right? These three things can divide by what? That's what I have to do. And we have to take the highest common factor that all these three can take up, right? So as we can see here, x square y, we can actually take out the y lah, right? Because all these three uh expression, they all have y. Can you see? So the answer is b lah. The answer is b. Yeah. Uh why cannot A? Eh? Because uh A cannot because if you look at the second term, you can't take out X. Yeah. So X is not a factor of this of the second one. So A is not the common factor for these three terms, right? And it cannot be C because if you look at the second term, it doesn't have XY, right? So that's why C cannot be the answer. And D also cannot because same reason, because the first term tada YZ, second term also tada YZ. Right? So, common factor means it has to be semua tiga-tiga pun boleh, tiga-tiga pun ada. That's why it's called common, sepunya. Right? It has to be common. Right? It has to be same in all, uh, this term has to exist in all three expression and it's the highest common factor. Right? So, hope you, hopefully you understand what is highest common factor. Right? Factor is like factorized. Lah. It means like what you can, what you can take out from these three terms. So, the, 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 the only thing I can take out from these three, three expression is Y. Right? So, hope you understand. Let's continue with number three. Which of the following is true? Square root P times square root P equals 2P. This is wrong. Right? So, let me explain something. Uh, let me explain a bit about uh, square root. Eh? So, square root. If I have square root, let's say square root A times square root B. Right? You will end up with square root AB. Okay? This is the first one that you need to uh, you need to know. Okay? If it's times. Eh? Second one is if I give you square root A divided by square root B, you can, if they both have square root and it's a divide in the middle, you can become square root A over B like this, right? But only if it's times and divide that you can you can apply this, this formula. And then the third one is, if I give you square root A times square root A, it will be A, right? Square root A times square root A, it will be A. So, for example, if I give you square root 3 times square root 3, the answer is automatic 3, okay? Why? Why, why is it like that? Because square root is actually 3 power 1 over 2. Okay, square root is actually power one or two. Okay, and if you have two number with same base and you multiply them together, 
you have to take the power and plus them together. So it will be three power one over two and three power two will be, will be three power one over two plus one over two. And one over two plus one over two is two over two, which is one. So what is three power one? Three. That is why square root three times square root three is equals to three. Okay, but we don't have to do all this, right? We just have to remember if we have two number, uh, two same number with square root, and then when you time them together, the square root will hilang lah. So for example, square root a times square root a will be a. That is why this is false because square root p times square root p. The correct answer should be p. But they say two it, but they write two p here. So definitely square root two p. So that definitely this is wrong. What about this one? Square root two p times p. Okay, let's try to simplify this. Square root two p times p. Okay, two p times p is actually two p square. Right, so this is the correct answer, but the one they write beside is doesn't even make sense. They write two square root p, so yeah, this is wrong. Yeah, okay. Of course, you can also, uh, separate them because do you remember I told you in the first one I said right, if I have square root a times square root b, it will become square root a times b. Right. So if you look at this, this is two times p squared because there's nothing in between. It's times here. Right. So you can actually separate them to this form, and it will become square root two times square root p square right and i and i already tell you that uh square root is power one over two right so it becomes square root two multiply with p power two and then the square root is actually power one over two and if the power is side by side like this you will take the power and uh, times it means you will take two times one over two so you will end up with square root two and then times with p right but it doesn't matter because it's still is this is still false because this and this doesn't even look the same, right? So yeah, B is also false, okay? Even if you try to, how to say, uh, separate this answer, you will still not get this. So yeah, it's still false. Okay, what about C? Square root P times P. Okay, uh, P times P is P square, yeah. So if I want to simplify square root P times P, you will get square root. P times P will just end up with P square. This is the, this is the, this is the correct answer. But of course, you can simplify this further as well. Because what is square root? Square root is power 1 over 2, right? So if I don't want to write square root, I can also write it like this. P power 2, power 1 over 2. And I already explained to you, if I said P power 2, power 1 over 2, it means 2 and 1 over 2, you will times them together. So it will be 2 times 1 over 2, you're left with 1. So the correct answer is actually P. So this is also false. So definitely the answer is D. Yeah, but let's try to do D and see whether I get this or, or not. So I will write down 2 times square root P times square root P. Okay, there's nothing in between here means times. Eh? So what you do is the 2 you cannot do because yeah, there's, uh, the 2 cannot times with anyone. Yeah, it's just alone. But the square root P and square root P, they can multiply together. I already explained using this formula just now. Square root A times square root A is A. So therefore, square root P times square root P must be P. And as you can see, the, the answer here match with the answer here. So, which of the following is true? D, la, right? So, yep. Okay, let's continue with number four. Diagram one shows the arrangement of first three of right angle triangle with height of 5 cm. So, these are all right angle triangle. That is why they have 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. And they all have a height of 5. So, tinggi dia semua 5. 5 cm, 5 cm, 5 cm. But if we use our eyes to... If you look carefully, you will realize that the... What do we call this? The base, right? The base is definitely not the same here is 4 cm but you can see that this is a bit longer and this is a bit longer than the previous one right the height is same right but the base is definitely not the same because it's getting bigger and bigger so let's see what they says here it is given that the base of the first triangle is 4 cm okay it's labeled here already the length of the subsequent subsequent means the next one all right the next one eh? so the length of the next base of triangle is 2 cm more than its previous one so definitely i have to plus 2, right? Because it's 2 cm more. So 4 plus 2 will be 6 cm. 6 plus 2 will be 8 cm, right? And then it says, find the area in cm square of the 100 triangle. Okay, how can I find the area of 100 triangle? Okay, let's not find the area of 100 triangle. Let's find the area of first triangle, right? So how to find area of first triangle? It will be 1 over 2 times 5 times 4, okay? But I don't want you to press this in your calculator. I just want you to write down the formula like this, right? Uh, because I want to generalize later. Uh, okay, it means I don't want you to, I don't want the answer for this. I don't want it, right? Because I want to generalize later. Okay, okay, so next one triangle, it will be, what is the area for the next one? It will be one over two times five times six. Do you agree? Okay, then the third one will be one over two times eight times five, uh, times five times eight, right? So these are all the area, right? 
So we add, and this is only the first, this is the first triangle. This is the second, this is the third one, right? So what we can do now is we can generalize, right? We can generalize and make a formula to find the area of tri n triangle. Do you understand what I mean? It means this is the area of first triangle. This is the area of second triangle. This is the area of third triangle. But I want to construct a formula, okay, for area of n triangle, right? It means I will generalize and make a formula for this. So one over two times five times. So you see, you get, you, as you can see, all the formula uh, have to take one over two times five. So when we generalize, uh, our formula also have to times with five, right? But the four, six, and eight, you have to change to something, right? You have to change to like an N. But the problem with this is four is actually what? Four actually comes from what? Uh, uh, these are all like uh, multiple of two, right? Okay, so instead of writing n, okay, because if I write n, I cannot guarantee n with 100 liter, right? Because your n starts with 4, you know, uh, because the first triangle starts with 4, second starts with 6, third with, starts with 8. So if I want to find area of 100, I need to make sure the n I can guarantee with 100 liter. So what I will do now is when I generalize, I make the 4, 6, 8 because I know these are all multiple of 2, right? Is They are all 4. It means 4 is actually... 2 times 2, 6 is actually 2 times 3, 8 is actually 2 times, what is this? 2 times 4, right? So I can actually write this into 2, and then the 2, 3, 4, since I'm trying to generalize and I'm trying to make this n equals to 1, I will write at 2n plus 2 here, right? Let me explain a bit, because 2 is actually the, because when n equals to 1, this equals to 2. When n equals to 2, this equals to 3. And then when this is uh, 3, this number will be 4. It means every time it's n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1. Therefore, it's actually the same as 2 bracket n plus 1. Do you understand? Because when it's first, this is 2. When it's second, this is 3. Third, this is 4. So it's actually n plus 1. That is why I can expand this. I will get two, 1 over 2 times with 5 times with 2n plus 2. And guess what? This is the formula. That this is the formula for area of n triangle. 1 over 2 times 5 times 2n plus 2. And n, you can substitute with which triangle you want. So if you substitute with the 1, n, you, if you substitute with 1, you will get the area of first triangle, which is 1 over 2 times 5 times 4. Because 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, you will get this. If the n is 2, it will be 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 6. So you will get this. And then if you guarantee the n is 3, you will get the third rectangle, the th third triangle area, which is 3 times 2, 6 plus 2, 8. And then you will get 1 over 2 times 5 times 8. But if I want 100, I will do 1 over 2 times 5 times with 2n plus 2. And this will be 100. And then you will get 2 times 100, which is 200. 200 plus 2 is 202. And then you press calculator. 202 times 5 divide 2. And my calculator give me 505. And... Yeah, A is your answer, right? Okay, I know some NMAT students, uh, they will do, they will use another method, right? Because MS students, they learn a chapter called progression. And yeah, they might use the formula what TN equals to A plus M minus 1D. Yeah, can also, can also, right? But since I'm doing mathematics, and also uh, uh, there is a chapter in mathematics called chapter, uh, the logical reasoning chapter, logical reasoning. And in this chapter, logical reasoning, sometimes they like to give you this, this, and this, and they like to uh, like like to ask you to make a conclusion. It means they ask you to generalize lah, uh, generalize and uh, make a conclusion. So I think it's important for students to learn how to, uh, when they give you like a few specific statement, you know how to generalize into a formula. So yeah, it, it means you. I I think it's important because we are doing mathematics and they will ask this also. Yeah, sometimes. So that's why I use this method to explain, right? So hope you understand. But of course, there's other lagi cepat punya cara to do this question. Okay, it's just that I I never, I never, I never do it that way. I just want to explain using this method because I think it's important to know how to generalize into a formula. Okay, hope you understand. Okay, number five, simplify this whole thing. All right, when we simplify this, we need to learn that we need to know a few things about. The law of indices, okay. The law of indices, all right. And we learned all we learned this in lower form, right? In form one, form two, form three, we learn about law of indices, right? So the first law we need to know is when we have a same base a power m times a power n, 
Okay, two numbers, same base. When we times them together, the power we have to plus. Lah. So it'll be a power m plus n. Second one is we have if we have a power m, divide a power n, base same, and then divide the power we have to minus. So it'll be a power m minus n. That's the second one. The third one is if I give you a power m power n. If it's this case, you will times. Uh, you will take the power and times them together. So it's the it will be the same as writing a power n power m, right? Because when you when you write it like this, you will times them also, and then you will get mn also. Okay, so this one is equal. Eh? Okay, next one is when you have power negative. When you have power negative, you can make it power positive. Okay, but you have to break it down. It means you become one over a power m, right? But when you bring it down, the base will stay the same. It's just that the power will change sign okay so bila you letak bawah base dia tetap sama tapi kuasa dia akan tukar tanda uh, so that's what it means right and is there anything else what is number five let's see uh, okay if i give you square root a it's equals to a power one over two if i give you cube root a is equals to a power one over three if i give you fourth root a is equals to a power one over four and then i think the last one is if i give you a power zero is the same as 3 power 0, is the same as 7 power 0, they are all equals to 1. Anything power 0 equals to 1. So I think, yeah, these are all the law of indices. I'm not sure if I got left out anything, but I think I include all the main formulas already. So yeah, let's do this question now. Okay, they got put bracket power 3. It means uh, everything inside this bracket have to power 3. So the 2 have to power 3. The e power 3 also have to power 3. So it will become e power 3, power 3. And I already mentioned in the third in the third baris here, if you have power side by side, you will times them together. So 3 times 3 is 9. Not 6, uh, it will be 9. Because you will times, not plus, 3 times 3, 9. And then multiply with 5. But I already said everything have to power 3, right? Everything is separate. So 5 also power 3. Yeah. And then what is F power 1 over 3 power 3? Well, F power 1 over 3 and then power 3 is actually F power 1. Okay. The reason is because you will take the 1 over 3 times 3. And 1 over 3 times 3 is just 1 because the 3 and 3 can cut. That's why you left with this. Oh, and by the way, you need to know that power 1 over 3 is actually cube root. Okay, it's actually cube root. Okay, and then the whole thing have to divide with 10 e power 4. Now, we can see that the number and the number we can boleh buat, buat lah. Okay, means nombor hanya boleh buat dengan number, e hanya boleh buat dengan e, f hanya boleh buat dengan f. Right? So, the numbers can only times with number and then E can only divide with E and then F can only do with F. So what I will do now is I'll press 2 power 3 times 5 power 3. 2 power 3 is 8. 5 power 3, 1, 2, 5. So 8 times 1, 2, 5. So I'll get 1,000. Right? 1,000. Okay. So this one times this one, I get 1,000. And then the E power 9, I cannot do with anyone. I'll just write it here. Times F. And then the whole thing I have to divide with 10 times E power 4. Now, what is 1,000 divided 10? Well, you will get 100. Okay, you will get 100. So we all know A and B confirm wrong already. Then what about E power 9 divide E power 4? It's divide huh? because satu duduk uh, atas, satu duduk bawah. So this is divide. So it will be E power 9 divide E power 4. So I will write here, E power 9 divide E power 4. According to the law of indices, the second one, when you have two numbers with same base and you divide, the power have to minus. So it will be E power 9 minus 4 and it's E power 5. Right? Then what about the F? Well, the F tak boleh buat dengan... Tak boleh buat dengan siapa-siapa because the F ah, tak ada, tak ada, dia tak ada kawan. Yeah, so just left with F. So yeah, this is the answer. Right? So the answer should be uh, D, I think. Yeah. So that's the correct answer. But I want you to know that sometimes you might get power negative in your final answer. So what you do is you apply this lah. If the power negative, you can bring it down. Or maybe if it's power negative, the power, you can bring it up. Okay? Yeah. Because when we simplify, we always want our final answer to be all the power is positive one. So if it's power negative, you just apply this formula and to make it positive. Okay, just apply this rule. Okay, hope you understand. I'm going to continue. Okay, number six. Express 9769.76 in standard form correct to three significant figures. Okay, I'm not good. I, I will explain how to convert to standard form first. Standard form means it has to look like this. A times 10 power n. Right? A times 10 power n. And then a is a number that has a des uh, a is a number that can have decimal point, but in front of the decimal point have to have one digit, okay? And that digit cannot be zero. I will explain one more time. Standard form means it will look like this: a times ten power n, 
And then the A will be a number yang boleh ada at decimal point. Dia boleh ada titik perpuluhan. But in front of the decimal point, depan titik perpuluhan, hanya boleh ada satu digit. Can only have one digit. And the digit cannot have, uh, cannot be zero. So if I give you 9769.76, automatic you will tell me this is not a standard form. Because in front of the decimal point, there is one, two, three, four digit, they are not zero. Four digit, in front of the decimal point that are not zero. So this is not this is not standard form because standard form, the A value can only have a decimal, in front of the decimal point can only have one digit. So I have to move the decimal point now, right? So I have to move ke belakang or ke depan. Mestilah ke depan, right? And I have to move until here. You know why, right? Because when the decimal point is here, depan decimal point hanya ada satu digit. That's why I have to move to the left one, two, three times. And you have to remember, when you're moving to the left, the power will be positive. Ataupun plus. But when you're moving to the to this direction, to the right, okay, your power have to minus. So when you're moving to the left, you will, you will, your decimal will reach here. So you will become 9.76976 because the decimal point moved to here already. But you have to times with 10 power Okay, you are moving how many times? Three times. Three times, right? So it'll be 10 power 3. But positive 3 or negative 3? Okay, you are moving in which direction? You are moving towards this direction, right? So if it's this direction, your, your 10 power will be positive, right? So this is your answer. But then they also said correct to three significant figures. So what you do is you take this value and you correct to three significant figures. So how do we correct three significant figures? We come from left to right. Okay, but if it's zero, we don't count it. Huh? The zero in front, we don't count it as significant figure. So, but this one we count huh? because it's nine, so one, two, three. So this is where we stop and we erase. But before we erase these three, uh, before we erase what's left here, we have to check whether the, the number next is more than five or not. So the number next here is nine, which is more than five. It means here I have to plus one. So you end up with 9.77. Okay, and then only you erase this times 10 power 3. So this is your final answer. Okay? Hope you understand. Eh? I already explained very slowly. Okay, number 7. Table 1 shows Farhan savings for the first 3 months. January, February, March. So these are all the RM. Okay, because they are representing savings, right? But they are all in different base. Num base 4, base 3, base 2. So this is definitely a number-based question. Let's see what I want. Farhan saved constantly and his savings every month formed a sequence. Calculate his total savings in base 9 at the end of June. I think this question is very similar to the question I did earlier, which is question number 4. Yeah. Okay. Where I have to form a form. I have to make a conclusion. It means I have to... How to say? I have to uh, generalize. Yeah. It means I have to make a formula and then I have to find it. Okay. But it's okay. Now I can't see the pattern yet because they are all in different base. So maybe if I change to base 10, okay, maybe I change all these numbers to base 10, then I can see the sequence, right? How, uh, like, what's the sequence and what's the pattern? So how do we change this to base 10? Very easy. When we are changing a smaller base to base 10, we always use the darab punya cara. It means we will times. But you have to write down the place value for, uh, we are, have to write down place value first. Lah. So if it's base 4, uh, the place value will be 4 power 0, 4 power 1, and 4 power 2. And then what you do is you take 4 power 2 times 1, 4 power 1 times 3, 4 power 0 times 2, and then plus everything. Okay? So 4 power 2 times 1 is 16. Okay, let's just write here. It'll be 16. Plus with 4 power 1 times 3, you can use calculator, you'll get 12. And then 4 power 0 times 2 is 2. Okay? And then 16 plus 12 plus 2, you will get 30. Yeah, 30. Okay? But, uh, and this is in base 10. Uh, so RM30 base 10. Okay? Uh, this is paper one, uh, so the working is not important. So you don't have to, how to say, uh, you don't have to write full working. Okay, you just don't think anyway, right? Okay, what about this? This is base three, how to convert to base 10? First, we, uh, we will also use the times punya chara because you are changing a smaller base to base 10. But you have to write down the place value. If it's base three, it'll be three power zero, three power one, three power two, three power three. And then you will take three power three times one, 27, plus with three power two times one, nine, 3 power 1 times 1 is 3, and then 3 power 1. Yeah. And then you just add everything. Use your calculator. Okay, let me press. Okay, my calculator give me 40 base 10. So I'm just going to write it down, 40 base 10. 
And finally, is uh, this one is in base two, so let's change to base ten, and we will also times. But we have to write down the place value first. If it's base two, the place value will be two power zero, two power one, two power two, two power three, two power four, two power five. So what you do is you will write two power five times one, which is thirty two, plus with two power times one times one is sixteen. The next one here is two power three, but why I never write it because I know two power three times zero is zero. Anything times zero is zero. And then this one zero also I can skip because when you time zero, nothing happened. And then the only thing left is two power one times one, which is two. And then the one at the back also you double thing out because when you take any number times zero, you will just get zero. So you just left with this and then you can quickly press this, you'll get 50 base 10. So I think it's very obvious that the pattern here is plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. Right, so calculate his total savings at the end of June. So this is January, February, March. So by the time, by the time it reached June, what would be the savings? All right, I'm gonna teach you how to generalize. Okay, so the first one is thirty. Okay, which is the first month, right? The first one is thirty, and then the second one is uh, forty. The third one is fifty. So let's generalize. Make a formula. Find monthly savings. So if you want to make it a formula, 30, 40, 50, we all know that 30 is actually 3 times 10. Do you agree? 3 times 10. Okay. But let me think. Is there any other way? Okay, if I write 3 times 10, this will be 4 times 10. This will be 5 times 10, right? So if everything times 10, it means my when we generalize, I will also times 10. But then the 3, 4, 5, it has to be 1 plus 2 2 plus 2, 3 plus 2, yeah. So it will be 10 bracket n plus 2. Yeah, when we generalize, this is the formula that we will use. Okay. Uh, let me explain. Let me explain. Uh, 30 comes from 3 times 10. 40 comes from 4 times 10. 50 comes from 5 times 10. So when we generalize, when we make a formula, okay, when we make a conclusion, it will be times 10 also. Lah. But then the 3, 4, 5 comes from uh, n plus 2 because and, and n represent the month yeah so when the n is 1 1 plus 2 is 3 and then when the n is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 and then this one n is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 right so the n can be 1 2 and 3 and so on right this is how we generalize okay when we make a formula and of course you can expand this you will get 10 n plus uh, 2 times 10 which is 20 so this is the formula that we can use to find the savings right but we are asking they are asking you to find savings in base 9 at the end of june right at the end of june so what i will do is find the june savings first so the june savings june savings will be 10 uh, we use this formula 10 n plus 20 but of course you cannot substitute n with one two three you have to substitute with six right because you want to know uh at the end of June, right? So 10 times 6 is 60. 60 plus 20 is 80. And this is not the answer, by the way. This is just the savings for June. They're asking you to find total savings. So what you have to do is you have to do 30 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60 until 80. Lah. Okay, until 80. Okay. Okay, I know some student might say like, hey, sir, why you explain so difficult? Like I, because some student they know, of, uh, like you can do it much more easy, right? Because if this is 30, this is 40, this is 50, right? You know the next one already. It's going to be 60, 70, 80, right? And you just have to count January, February, March, April, June. Uh, hey, wait. January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah. So you all know that you just, it's just plus until here, right? We don't even have to do all this, right? But the reason why I do, why I want you to learn how to generalize is because they like to ask this in logical reasoning chapter and they ask in paper two where they will give you like a few value and they ask you to make a conclusion by induction. Yeah. And they will ask you to generalize, make a formula. So I want students to learn how to do this. Okay. But actually for this type of question, there is fast, uh, there is a faster way to do it. I know. Okay. Okay. Anyways, let's continue by adding all these numbers. So let me press my calculator. Okay, if you got pressed correctly, you will get 330, right? And of course, it's in base 10, right? So this is the answer. This is the total savings. But then if I look at ABCD, Tadre Jawapan, right? Because, oh, they want in base 9. So yeah, I have to convert to base 9. Lah. So let's convert to base 9. Okay, how do we convert a base 10 value to a smaller base, like a base 9 number? We will divide. Uh, we will bahagi. When If you are changing a smaller base to base 10, we will darab. 
take the place value direct with the digit. But if you are changing from base 10 to a smaller base, we will divide, use the divide method. And we will divide by 9 since I want base 9, so I will divide by 9. And here, I will write the remainder. So what is 330 divide 9? You can use calculator. 330 divide 9, you will get 36.66666. It means that it's 36. Lah. And then what about the remainder? The remainder will be the 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 decimal at the back, which is 0 0.6666 times 9. So I get 6. Okay? Okay? If the 6 comes from 0 0.6666 times 9. Okay? Actually, if you third press like that, the calculator will give you 5.999. La, but, so it's 6. La, all right? Okay? And then you divide 9 again. Okay, 36 divide 9. If you press calculator, you get 4. It means that there is no decimal. means the remainder is 0. And then 4 divide 9... It's just zero, okay, but the remainder is four. Okay, so the answer will be you butcher dari bawah ke atas. So the answer is four zero six base nine. So the answer must be C. Yeah. So that's the answer. Okay, that's all. Okay, let's continue with number eight. Which of the following is not a key component in smart concept for goal setting? So smart stands for specific, S is specific. M is measurable. Hey, by the way, what is this chapter? This is from 4 chapter 10. Eh? Uh, it's called the Consumer Mathematics Financial Management chapter. So the smart concept, you have to know what this uh, stands for. Specific, measurable. Okay. And then A is attainable. Attainable. And then R is realistic. Realistic. T is time bound. Okay. But if you learn in Basem Layu, uh, then yeah, it's different already, right? So... But in, in Basem Layu, I think your, your teacher will teach in English also because the the concept is called the smart concept. Yeah, so I think you have to learn it in English also. So which of the following is not a key component? A lah. This one, yes. This one, yes. This one, yes. So A is the answer. Yeah. This one, nothing much to explain. You just have to remember what the S-M-A-R-T, what they all uh, stands for. Yeah. Okay, number nine. The formula below is used to calculate chargeable income. So what is X? So let's talk about cukai pendapatan, income tax. So the income tax got a lot of steps, right? The first step is to calculate your chargeable uh, income first. And the formula is you take your total income, total income, you minus with your tax exemption and you minus with your tax relief, okay? And then step number two is you refer the jadwal or you can say the, the table, right? And this table, they will give you in exam one. And when you refer the journal, you will get two information, which is the base tax in Bahasa Melayu, Cukai Dasar. And then another information you will get from the, the jadual, the table, is called the balance. Okay, the balance. Or in Bahasa Melayu, it's called the Cukai Baki. And after you get the Cukai Dasar and the Cukai Baki, you will add them together. right? And for your final step, it will be the Cukai Dasar. Okay, okay after you add these two, you will get a new value, right? And then now the third step is to take this value minus with rebate. Okay. And you need to have there is two types of rebate. The first type of rebate is uh when your chargeable income is less than or equal 35,000, then you you are eligible for the rebate 400. And then another type of rebate is called the zakat. Lah. And after you take your chukai dasa, tamba chukai baki, tolak dengan rebate, then you finish already. Then you can then you can get your income tax, right? But there is actually another step called PCB, but I don't want to get into that because this question didn't even didn't even ask about that. Eh? But if you got PCB, you have to consider these steps. Lah. Okay, but let's see what they want. They just want to calculate, charge, uh, they just want the chargeable income formula. So it's total income minus tax action minus tax relief. So the answer is C. Okay, A cannot be the answer because tax rebate is you will minus last kali baru you minus. Okay, when you are finding after you take out jadual, and then when you are trying to find the cukai perlu dibayar, only you will minus the rebate. Okay, when you calculate chargeable income, you will not minus the rebate. Zakat also is a type of rebate, so yeah, you don't minus here. You will not minus in the first step. You will minus at the uh last kali baru you minus allowance lagi lah. Eh? Allowance, yeah, it's just not the answer. Yeah, so the answer here is definitely C. Okay, number ten. 
if G ratio H is 2 ratio 3, H ratio I is 5 ratio 7, find the ratio of G ratio H ratio I. So G ratio H ratio I, this is what they want. So G ratio H is 2, 3. So I'll just write 2 to 3 here. And then H to I is 5 to 7. So I'm just going to write here 5 to 7. And I have to somehow combine these two ratio into one ratio. And that would be the answer. But how? How can I combine? You have to make sure the number here is same. If the number here is same, uh, then only I can combine these three. I mean, uh, then only I can combine these two sets of ratio. So how do we make this same? Well, three and five. How can I make them the same? I can take this whole thing times with five, right? And then take this whole thing times with three. Because when I do that, the three will times five is 15. Five times three is 15. So I will end up with 15 in the middle. And then two, I have to times five. So I'll end up with 10. 7 and 3, which is 21, right? So the answer is C, okay? Remember, ratio is like fraction. So if I tell you 2 ratio 3, uh, it's like saying that it's 2 over 3. So it's actually, you can actually times with any number you want, right? Like for example, you want to times 5, yeah, you can do that. But you make sure the atas punya number pun you darab dengan same number lah. Uh, so 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15. This one and this one, they are the same thing, right? So remember, ratio is like fraction. You can multiply with any number you want. Just make sure you do the same for the for the top number and the bottom number. Okay? So you boleh darab dengan nombor apa saja. Just make sure kalau bawah darab satu nombor, atas pun kena darab nombor yang sama. Okay? That, that's how you do it. Okay, number 11. Which of the following pairs are light terms? Yang manakah mempunyai sebutan serupa? What is serupa? What is light terms? It means these two terms have the same variable or you can say same unknown. So if look, we look at this, this is 12A, 4BA. So these are not like terms. B, 4, 5P, 6P. Yep, this is like terms because they have the same unknown, same variable. It means when you plus them together or you minus them together, you can do it, right? Because they are like terms, right? When you plus minus, they can they can what sama sama. But if you try to plus minus this one, you cannot do, okay? Okay, what about C? These are also not like terms because this is S duduk bawah. So when you move it up, you become 6S power negative 1. So they are not the like terms already. Same with this. This is X power 2X. So they cannot bot sama sama because when you plus or minus them, you can't... They cannot plus minus together. Only B can, right? Because they are like terms. They have the same unknown. Okay? Yeah, very simple. Eh? Okay, number 12. Let's go. Which of the following diagram represents graphically a linear equation in two variables? What is linear equation? What is two variable? Linear equation means it's an equation where the highest power is one. And then two variable means they have two unknowns. So for example, x, y. So I'm just going to give you an example here. 2x plus 3y equals 7. So this is called what we call a linear equation in two variable. Can you see? It's a linear because the highest power is one. And then it has two variable. So yeah, x and y. Right? So yeah, this is how you do it. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, which one is the linear equation 2 variable? 1 and 4. 2 and 3, no. Because 2 and 3, when you form an equation, you were just going to get one variable. This one will be y equals to something. This one will be x equals something. Right? So this type of equation only have one variable. But I want to explain why I, macam mana saya tahu yang these two lines, they have one variable. Because I got, this is how I teach my own student. Uh, straight line, Ada dua jenis. Okay, jenis pertama, we call it gradient line. And when it's gradient line, the equation will look like this. Y equals mx plus c. And you have to find out the m and c lah. And the m represents gradient, the c represents point intercept. Right? The second type of line is non-gradient line. When it's a non-gradient line, the line will either look like this or it will look like this. And if it's look like this, it means it's completely horizontal and you can't find the gradient, by the way, for this for lines like this, you can't find the gradient because the gradient will be zero and infinity. It means that's why we call it non-gradient line. And for this type of line, it's just gonna the equation will just gonna be y equals number. And then for this type of line, it will just be x equals number, right? And the number will depends on where they cut the y-axis. Let's say this line cut the y-axis at seven, then the equation is y equals seven. If it's cut at six, then it's y equals six. Same with this. This is also is can you see it's cutting the x-axis? So yeah, this number depends on where the line where the vertical line cuts the x-axis, okay? So that is why this type of line, they will only have one variable, y equals number, x equals number. It's because the gradient, you can't find a gradient, yeah. So that's why I know two and three is definitely one variable. So one, they're asking for two variables, so one and four. So let's go to ABCD. Which one is the answer? One and four, okay? So that's how you do it. 
Okay, let's go number 13. The number line below represents solution of an inequality. So this is form 1, I think. Yeah, you learn it in form 1. It's called linear inequality. Actually, you learn it in form 4 also, but when you learn it in form 4, you learn about... Uh, because, uh, okay, this is what we, this one, we call it number line. Yeah, and number line, uh, there's only x axis. But when you go to, how to say, when you muscle form 4, you never use the number line. You use the Cartesian plane, which is the y axis, x axis, and you no longer do it like this already. You will use a straight line. Okay, you will use a straight line. All right. And if the inequality, because inequality is either like this, like this, like this, or like this, right? And if the inequality sign the other line, the Gabawa, the other line, the Gabawa, you will use dotted line. Right? This is how you do it in form 4. This is in form 4. Lah, okay? But when you are in form 1, uh, you don't do it in a Cartesian plane. You are just using a number line. It means uh, there is only x-axis only. Okay? And you will instead of using a line, you will use a dot. You will use a circle. Yeah. Okay, okay let's see what they want. Which of the following inequalities satisfy the above solution? Okay, I'm just going to tell you if the inequality sign is like this, the other line, we will not color the circle. Okay? But if the inequality sign is like this, then we will cover the circle, right? It means that number is included. So this is definitely x bigger sum than 4, okay? Because they got color. That's why I, got, I have to put line here. And why is it bigger? Because the arrow is pointing this direction. So definitely, it has to be like this, right? It's pointing towards there. It means bigger, bigger 4, okay? So A, B, C, D, which one is the answer? Okay, I can see A, B, C, D. Tak ada satu pun yang match dengan yang ni, kan? So, I think what I have to do now is try to uh, go to the answer A, B, C, D and try to solve this inequality and see whether, see which one gives me this one, right? So, let's try to solve the first one, which is the A. So, I will do it here. So, A says X minus 16 equals to this. So, I can actually pin out the plus 2X here, become minus 2X and then bigger sum of the negative 20 minus 16, move it there, become plus 16. And then I can just quickly solve this. 1x minus 2x, 1 minus 2 is negative 1x. Negative 20 plus 6, uh, I think is negative 4. Yeah. And how can I find x? It will be negative 4. Okay, when you move the negative, means you are dividing by negative 1. So x will be 4. But there is a problem with this because the bigger have to change to smaller. Okay, remember, when you are dividing by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. It means bigger have to double it, it's smaller. Right? So this is the solution for A, or the answer for A, which is not the same. Lah. So A is not the answer. Yeah, A is not the answer. So this is not correct. Now we do B. Okay, B, I think I'll do it here. Lah. So B, what I'll do is, I'll try to solve this inequality and see whether I get this or not. Lah. Okay, first thing first, X dengan X boleh buat, number dengan number boleh buat. But we have to pin that so that they are on the same side first. So plus 3X move here, become minus 3X. And then bigger sama dengan 10, and then the 18 can go to the other side, become minus 18. And now 1 minus 3. 1x minus 3x is negative 2x. 10 minus 18, use your calculator, negative 8. So x will be negative 8. Times negative 2 become divide negative 2. So x will be 4. Right? But what is the symbol in between? Will it be bigger or smaller? It will be smaller. Right? Why suddenly bigger, bigger change to smaller? Because I divide by negative. So this is the solution for B. Okay, is this same with this one? No. So B is also not the correct answer. So B is wrong, A is wrong. So let's try with C. Lah. Okay, C is 2x minus 4. It's bigger sum than x. So the x, I can move it here, become minus. And then the negative 4, I move it to the other side, become 4. And then the symbol, you don't. Uh, we have to follow, lah, which is bigger sum than bigger or equal. So what I do now is I can take 2x minus 1x. 2 minus 1 is 1. So you just left with 1x. And then bigger or equals 4. So this one is exactly the same with what I write here. So C is definitely the answer. Okay. So yeah, that's all. all right. Okay. Number 14. Factorize completely. So 18x squared minus 2. What is factorize? Factorize means we make it so that it has bracket. So 18x squared and 2. What we can take it out. Take out. Okay. Factorize means like you keluarkan lah. Factorkan. So 18 and 2, we can, they can both divide by 2. So I can factorize out the 2. What about the x? Okay, the x cannot take out. Because uh, this one got x, but this one, this 2, the other x. So we cannot take out the x. So the only thing we can factorize is 2. It means the, the factor here, the common factor here is 2. 
So what is 18x squared divided 2? You're left with 9x squared. Negative 2 divided 2, which is negative 1. Right? But you can still factorize further because 9 and 1, you can change to what? 9 is the same as 3 squared. Okay? And then x squared, I will just leave it. And then 1, I can change to 1 squared. Right? Tapi kenapa saya buat macam tu? Why I change so that everything has square? It's because I know when every, every number here got square, I can write 3x minus 1, 3x plus 1. Okay? So when everything has square, we can factorize it like this. 1 plus, 1 minus, and then 3x1, 3x1. Okay? So this is the answer. I don't think you can factorize this further. So yeah, this is the answer. So A, B, C, D. C is the answer. D cannot because they write minus 1, minus 1. It has to be 1 plus, 1 minus. Okay? Doesn't matter which one, depan, which one, belakang. Yang penting is 1 minus, 1 plus. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Okay, number 15. Ahmad bought 10 apples and 5 dragon fruits. The price of an apple and a dragon fruit are RMX and RMY respectively. Ahmad paid with the amount of RMZ expressed by in terms of X and Z. So we should know that Z must be equals to 10X plus 5Y. Do you agree? Because uh, there's 10 apples. Okay, there's 10 apples. But the price of one apple is X ringgit. So the amount he has to pay for the apple is 10 times X lah. Because X is only price for one apple. So 10 times X will be the total price of apple. And then 5 times Y will be the total price of dragon food. But since it's paid with the amount of Z, that's why Z must be equal to 10X plus 5Y. But when I look at A, B, C, D, no answer. So how? Huh? Okay, very easy. Just look at the A, B, C, D. They are all making Y as the subject. Right? They are all... Because all the option here, Y is the subject, right? So I think I have to... Make y the subject also. Lah. So what I will do is I will rewrite this whole thing. 10x plus 5y equals z. It's the same equation. I just I just uh, flip it upside down. And then now I try to make y the subject. Because all the options here, they are all making y subject. So I will try to make y single. So what I will do is I will pin out the 10x first. Become minus 10x. And then the times 5, I move there. Become divide 5. Lah. So it will be y equals to z divide 5. Okay, and then minus 10 also I have to divide 5, which is negative 2x, right? So this is your answer. So A, B, C, D, uh, no. This one also wrong. This one, Z, might lagi wrong. So I think it's B, right? Yeah. So 1 over 5, Z, and Z over 5 is the same thing, right? So this Z over 5, we can also write it like this, 1 over 5, Z. Okay? Because when we write the Z in the middle, uh, it means dia atas punya, right? So yeah, 1 over 5 times Z is the same as z over 5 because when you times you times atas so these two is the same thing so the answer is b okay okay let's continue 16 given that point a is located two units on the left of y axis and three units above x axis okay whereas point b is located 10 units on the right of y axis two units below x axis calculate the distance of a b okay this question might be challenging for some students because it's like very confusing, right? It's like, where is the point, right? So, what I recommend you is like, you draw draw out the Cartesian plane, yeah. So, what I will do now is I'll draw the y-axis and draw the x-axis, okay? So, draw the y-axis, draw the x-axis, okay? And then, I will try to label the, the first point and the second point inside the Cartesian plane. So, we all know this is, this was zero, zero. So, let's read again, point A. Is located two units on the left of y-axis. So this is your y-axis. So point A is definitely two units from the y-axis. So point A must be somewhere here, right? Somewhere here. But then it says three units above x-axis. So above x-axis means one, two, three. So definitely this is the point A, right? So I'm just going to erase all this. And then from here is uh, two units from the two units left of y-axis, three units above x-axis. So this is y-axis. So one, two, and then here must be three units. So one, two, three. So this is my point A. Okay, this is my point A. Okay, and I can write down the coordinate actually because if I butcher here, this will be negative two. And then this will be three. Do you agree? And then this will be negative two, three. Okay. It's because uh, if you are left, if you are two units, left of y-axis, it means your x-coordinate is definitely negative 2. Lah. And then since the thingy here is 3, it means the thingy here is 3, that's why the y-coordinate is 3. So makes sense, right? Okay, let's go to point B. 10 units to the right of y-axis. Okay, this is y-axis. I must go 10 units. 
and then two units below x axis. So I think somewhere, I think my point B is somewhere here, right? Because it's below x axis and to the right of y axis. So let's go to somewhere here and then go 10 units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oops. Let's do one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So definitely this is 10, yeah. So this is 10. And then it says two units below x axis. So it means this is actually two units below x axis, right? It means that here must be negative two, lah, right? Why negative? Because below, right? So what will be the coordinate of this point? It will be 10 negative two or negative two, 10? 10 negative two, right? We always write the x coordinate first. And this will be my point B. And now they say calculate the distance of AB. Okay, what I will do now is I'll join a line connecting A and B and I'll try to find the distance. Okay, you can use the distance formula. Do you know what is the distance formula? Square root, bracket square plus bracket square and the formula is x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2. Yeah, you can use this formula. But I want you to, I want to explain to you using another method. Okay, because not many students know this. This formula actually comes from Pythagoras theorem. Okay, yeah, this formula actually comes from Pythagoras theorem. So I'll use the red color uh, and then I'll draw out the right angle triangle for you. So if you want to find the distance of AB, what you will do is you will join a line like this and join the line like this so that it forms a right angle triangle. And once you form a right angle triangle, just get the vertical distance and the horizontal distance and then you can use Pythagoras theorem to find this distance. You understand, right? Because this is the one I this is the panjang I want. So what is the how many units here from here to here? It will be here to here got three units already. Right? One, two, three. And then here I think you have to go down two units. So in total is one, two, three, four, five. So it's five units. Okay. Don't look at the negative sign. Eh? The negative sign is not important because we only want the uh, proper unit. We don't want the because the negative is just because it's below zero. Right? We only want the panjang. Okay, what about here to here? From here to here, other brapper kotak. So from here to here, I know it's 10 kotak. And then plus with 2 here, right? So it means that here got 2 kotak. 2 plus 10, it will be 12 kotak in total. So to get the distance of AB, I can use Pythagoras theorem. It will be square root, bracket square, bracket square, and our plus. Why plus? Why plus? Because I'm finding the longest side in the right angle triangle. I'm finding the hypotenuse. And when we're finding the hypotenuse, you must take the remaining side square and then plus them together. And then square root 8. That's why it's 5 and 12. So if you press calculator, 5 square plus 12 square, 12 square is 169. And then square root 169 is 13. So if you look at A, B, C, D, tak ada answer yang tulis 13, right? But other satu answer yang tulis square root 169, right? But we all know square root 169, this is equals to 13. So definitely this is the answer. Lah. But if you press this one, this one, this one, uh, you will not get 13. That's why A, B, C is wrong. D is the correct answer. Okay, now I want to come back to this formula. I told you already, right? This formula actually come from uh, by the rest theorem. So yeah, if you do x1 minus x2, you will get 5 also, right? Okay, because you will take 10 minus negative 2, right? Okay, you will not, okay, okay, sorry. y minus y, baru you dapat 5, right? So if you use this formula, you will do, get the same because 10 minus negative 2 is just going to be 10 plus 2 here. And then y minus y, which is negative 2 minus 3, right? So you end up with negative 5 here and then you end up with 12 here. So it will be 12 square plus 5 square because this one when you square it uh, the negative will hilang so yeah is you end up with the same answer okay so yeah I just want you to know that this formula actually come from the Pythagoras theorem okay hope you understand okay number 17 table 2 shows values of two variables x and y for this equation okay calculate the value of 2m minus p this is like a graph of function punya chapter punya question because we usually see this type of question in paper 2 Paper 2, section B, where they ask you to draw graph, right? But this is paper 1, so I don't think you have to draw graph. So we just have to find the value of M and P, and then find 2M minus P. Okay, how to find M and P? Okay, M is actually the Y value when X is negative 3. So what I'll do is I'll just substitute inside this equation. Y equals X squared minus 2X minus 8. So the Y will get replaced with M, and then the X and the X here will get replaced with negative 3. And now, if I want to find M, I just have to press all these in my calculator. Okay? So very easy, just press negative 3, press, uh, make sure you put the bracket, minus 2 bracket, negative 3, and then minus 8. Okay, my calculator give me 7. So yeah, my M is 7, right? So 
just write seven year and then write seven year. And then now to get my P, I do the same thing. I just substitute again inside this equation, Y equals X squared minus 2X minus 8. But this time my Y will get replaced with P and my X will be zero. So if P equals to X squared minus 2X minus 8. So my XX will be replaced with zero, zero. And now I press all this in my calculator, you'll get negative eight. So if your P is negative eight and your M is seven, now I can find 2M minus P. Is equivalent to 2m minus p. My m, I know already 7. My p, I know already is negative 8. So now I can just press my calculator again to get this. So if you press, you will get 22. So the answer is D. Lah. Okay. So yeah, I think this is easy. Lah. And yeah, very, very senang this question. Okay, number 18. Diagram 2 shows a speed time graph. So when it's a speed time graph, you need to know that the gradient will give you the acceleration and the area of this will give you the distance. I repeat one more time. For speed time graph, you can use gradient to find acceleration and you can use the area under graph to find distance. Okay, okay let's see what they want. For a period of 20 seconds. Okay, so okay, yes. So the unit here is speed uh, and then this is time. But if you look carefully, this unit is kilometer per hour and this unit is second, right? So the unit actually didn't match here, right? This is kilometer per hour per second, right? So when you find the acceleration, you are taking the y-axis divided x-axis. So your unit will be kilometer per hour per second, right? Unless you convert this to hour. But let's see what they want. Uh, calculate the difference between the maximum and minimum acceleration in kilometer per hour per second for the particle. So when we are doing this kind of question, uh, the unit is always very important. The unit is a, is a big thing. You have to always look out for the unit. So kilometer per hour per second means uh, I don't have to change anything. I don't have to change any unit already because if they want the acceleration in kilometer per hour per second, it means you straight away take this and you take this and enough already. Okay. So now I'm trying to find acceleration but they want maximum and minimum. So how? Uh? I think you have to find out all semua garisan punya acceleration. And how do we find acceleration? Use gradient. I mentioned in the beginning already, this is a speed time graph. So you can use gradient to find the acceleration. So I will write number one, I will write gradient. Okay. So let's use gradient to find the acceleration. But there's so many lines here, right? So they all will have different gradient. It means they all have different acceleration. Lah. So let's do the first line. The first line, when I find gradient, I need two points. So the first point on this line is 0, 0. Another line, another point we use here is 230. And the formula for gradient is y minus y, 30 minus 0, divide x minus x, 2 minus 0. So I'll end up with 15. It means that the acceleration here is 15 kilometer per hour per second. Okay? Because 30 minus 0, this unit is in kilometer per hour. And then 2 minus 0, this unit is in second. That's why when you divide them, uh, the unit will come out kilometer per hour per second. Right? And that's what they want. Yeah, that's what they want. Uh, they want it in this unit. But let's say they want in kilometer H minus 2. If they want like this means uh, this one you have to convert to hour. Uh, right? That's why you have to be careful. Right? So, I always have to check the unit. Okay? Okay, let's go to the second line. Okay? Second line, how to find the acceleration? You will also use gradient. So, what I will write here is I will find the gradient. Uh. So, this line uh, so if I want this line, I need two points. Okay, the first line is two. The uh, first point is two thirty. Another one is five sixty. So I will take y minus y sixty minus thirty. Okay, which is this one minus this one, and then x minus x, which is this one minus this one, five minus two. Okay, and the unit will come out in kilometer per hour per second also. So what is this? If you press in calculator, you will get ten. Okay, ten and ten is ten kilometer per hour per second, and it is the acceleration. For this line, okay, okay. The third line it will be zero. Yeah, the gradient will be zero. Okay, because when it's like this, ah, uh, the line is like this. It means it's constant speed, ataupun uniform speed. It means that th there's no acceleration here. There's no speed change here. So yeah, it's zero. Of course, I can prove to you as well. Yeah, okay. I'll just find the gradient. Just prove to you quickly that it's zero. Let's find two points. Okay, let's use this point twelve sixty. Yeah, you can see you really get zero. Y minus y is sixty minus sixty x minus x is 12 minus 5. Can you see you get 0? Because 60 minus 60 is 0. And then 0 divided anything is 0. So yeah, 0. So the gradient is 0. It means uh, there's no acceleration happening here. Okay. Okay, it means the acceleration is 0. Okay, for my last line, 
the fourth the last line what is the how much is the acceleration here well we use gradient to find acceleration so we need two coordinate first coordinate and the second coordinate will be 20 100 so the gradient will be y minus y divide x minus x so y minus y will be 100 minus 60 this one minus this one and then divide x minus x 20 minus 12. okay let's press calculator 40 divide 8 i think it's 5 yeah it means if the gradient of this line is 5, means the acceleration is also 5. Okay. Okay. Now I can find the difference. Difference means I have to take besar tolak kecil. Paling maximum, tolak paling minimum. So these four answer, which one is the maximum acceleration? 15. And what is the minimum acceleration? 0. So if you take 15 minus 0, you will get the difference. All right. Difference means beza. Eh? Besar tolak kecil. So the answer is 15. Eh? Because 15 minus 0 is 15, right? So A, B, C, D, other Japan 15 ke? Other. So that is the answer. Oops. Let me just... Yeah, this is the correct answer. Let me explain a bit. When the line is like this, going up, it means it's accelerate. If it's speed time graph, lah, okay? if it's speed time graph, if the line is like this, then yeah, it's accelerate. This one also accelerate because it's going up. But if it's like this, it's flat. It means the time is increasing, but the speed never change. It means that this is constant speed. Ataupun uniform speed. It means during this time, the car never increase the speed or it never decrease the speed. So they are either accelerate, they are decelerate. That is why the acceleration is zero. Okay? Constant speed, uniform speed. And then here, it's accelerate again. Lah. Okay? But what if the line is going down? Then it's decelerate. Decelerate means uh, it means uh, the car is slowing down. Okay? The speed is decreasing over time. Okay, but this one is the, this one, this line is, the speed is constant over time. Okay, the speed never changed, right? That's why there's no acceleration. Okay, hope you understand. Okay, number 19. Given that 2x over 5 minus y over 4 equals 1 is an equation of straight line. Okay, it's equation. Determine the value of y-intercept and the gradient of straight line. Okay, there's two methods to do this question. I'm just going to explain to you using the, uh, the most common method we know lah. Okay, the most common method is change to y equals mx plus c. Okay, this is the first method. But there's another faster way to do this. Okay, I'm, I, I will explain using this slow method first. So the slower way to do this type of question is change to y equals mx plus c. Because equation of straight line, all equation of straight line can change to this form, y equals mx plus c. So when you change to mx plus c, you can get your y-intercept and your gradient automatic. Because m is the gradient, c is the y-intercept, right? So the equation they give us now is 2x over 5 minus y over 4 equals 1. So if I want to change this to linear form, this one we call it linear form, huh? y equals mx plus c, what I want to do is I will make the y single. I want to make the y single on this side. So what I will do now, I will make the y single. So I will leave the negative y over 4 here and then I will move this whole thing to the other side, become negative 2 over 5x equals 1. Oh, and by the way, the x duduk atas, right? So if the x duduk atas, you can actually write in the middle like this. Okay, just don't write bawah. If you write bawah, salah. Okay, because when you write in middle, uh, it means that it's atas punya. And then here is plus. Okay, okay, sampai sini, you want to change to y equals mx plus c. And if you want y equals mx plus c, means the y has to be single. Okay, they tablet other negative, they tablet other fraction, anything like that. So what I will do now is I will take everything times 4. To get rid of the 4. So everything times 4, you get negative 8 over 5 here. And then 1 times 4, you'll be 4. Okay, just take the whole equation times 4 times 4. Now, I have to move the negative, right? Because I want to change to this form. Y equals mx plus c, okay? And I don't want the negative. So what happens when I pin down the negative? Okay, when you pin down negative, means you are dividing every number by negative 1. And what happens when you divide negative 1? Tukar tanda lah. So negative 8 over 5 become positive 8 over 5. Plus 4 becomes negative 4. So this is the equation in linear form. So yes, you can see it's y equals mx plus c. And what is m? The gradient. m means gradient. And what is c? c means y-intercept. So let's look at a, b, c, d. Which one is the answer? The y-intercept is according to my working is negative 4. So this is wrong. This is wrong. And then the m, which is the gradient, is 8 over 5. So this is wrong as well. So a is the answer. Okay, I want to explain to you using another method, which is uh, lagi cepat punya cara. So, when we are doing equation of straight line, this is not the only form that we learn. Okay, equation of straight line, ada juga form yang lain. So, the equation of straight line, of course, we have the first form. We call it linear form. Linear form means, 
it has to look like this, y equals mx plus c. But sometimes you call it gradient form. Yeah, but it's the same thing. Gradient form, linear form, the equation look like this, mx plus c. But there's another form, we call it general form. General form is what? General form is uh, bentuk arm. In, it's when your equation is like this, ax plus by plus c equals zero. Because general form must be equal to zero, right? And sometimes if your equation have uh, power two, then it has to be like that lah. Ax power two plus bx plus c. Okay, but yeah, that, that's not important. Just make sure general form is always everything on one side equals zero. Okay. Uh, what about the third form? Third form is called the intercept form. Okay, intercept form. And the intercept form looks like this: x over x intercept plus y over y intercept equals to one. Right. Okay, and I want you to know that you can actually change from change the equation from this form to this form to this form to this form. They can, uh, how to say, change to each other. Yeah, they can change to each other. Okay, it means linear form can change to general form, general form can intercept form, intercept form can change back, change, they play tukar tukar. Okay, so if you look at this equation, yang dia bagi 2x over 5 minus y over 4 equals 1, it's very, very, uh, very, very similar to the intercept form. Do you agree? Because the intercept form is also equals to 1. And this one also equals to 1, right? So the, the, the other method to do this question is you can change to intercept form, right? But sir, if you change to intercept form, how to get the gradient? Okay, I'll show you later. Because gradient are the dual formulas. First formula for gradient is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. This formula is the formula that everyone is familiar with this formula for gradient. But there is actually another gradient formula. And this formula we jaran guna lah because only in special case such as I boleh guna formula ni. The formula is negative y intercept bahagi x intercept. This formula we jaran guna actually because ah uh, we always use the formula yang atas. Kenapa? Because formula yang atas ni we can use in all cases. But formula yang bawah ni kita hanya boleh guna in sesetengah case saja. Bila dia bagi y intercept x intercept, then only we can use this formula. That is why we don't use this formula that often. But now we can use it. For this question. So what I will do now is I will try my best to change this to intercept form. Okay, let me show you what, what I will do is okay for intercept form, ah, you only want x sahaja yang duduk atas. Dia tak boleh ada two macam two. So the two ah, I will push it down. But when you push it down, ah, what happens to here is the two and five will switch. They will terbalik. Become five over two. Okay, let me explain. x times two over five. x times two over five is the same as x divide five over two. Understand, right? And then, if according to the intercept form, it has to be plus here. It means the negative, huh, you have to write down like this. Okay? Yeah, the negative, memang, you boleh tulis atas, bawah, or middle, up to you. Right? But if you want in intercept form, you must write it down. Right? And then, it goes to 1. And yeah, there you go. This is the intercept form. And from intercept form, what you can nampak, the x-intercept, which is 5 over 2, and the y-intercept. Right? That is why the y-intercept is negative 4 lah. So it's either this or this, right? But then how to get the gradient? Well, you can use the second formula of gradient I showed you just now. Negative y-intercept over x-intercept. Okay? Uh, remember this second formula. Okay, what is the y-intercept? Negative 4. You can straight away ambit the intercept form. And then the x-intercept is 5 over 2. But make sure you put bracket here. Lah. So now what I press is I will press 4 divided 5 over 2. But make sure you press bracket. So 4 divided bracket 5 over 2. If you don't ever put, put bracket, you will get the wrong answer. So the calculator will give you 8 over 5. Then what about the negative? Okay, the negative tak payah tekan because negative times negative will become positive. So the answer will just be positive 8 over 5. And as you can see, yeah, the answer is still A, right? So I explained using two methods, right? But they give you the same answer. So, yeah, okay. But I think it's still important to know this formula and the intercept form because I remember this one they asked in... I remember last year trial also got asked, but I, I don't remember which state paper lah, okay? But yeah, it's very rare that they come out intercept form, but they got come out before. So yeah, it's important to know about this form also. So I will just leave it here and yeah, hope you learn something new from it lah, okay? Okay, let's continue with number 20. So we are halfway done already. Let's go. Given R varies inversely as the cube root of S and R. Equal, and r equals 4 when s equals 27. Express r in terms of s. Okay, you need to know why they give you r and s. It's for you to find k later. And what is k? k is the constant. Okay, okay. before you do 
before you find K, before you use this information, this information, you need to write down the variation first. So R varies inversely as cube root of S. So R varies inversely. Inversely means uh, dia akan duduk bawah. Okay, if directly, dia duduk atas. Okay, directly atas dengan atas. Inversely, atas dengan bawah. So R varies inversely as cube root of S. It means that the cube root of S have to duduk bawah. And cube root, this is how we write cube root, like this. Okay, and if there's nothing, atas means you have to write a 1. So this is how we write the variation. Okay. In Bahasa Melayu, cube root is called punca kuasa tiga. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Sampai sini, apa you akan buat is you have to change this symbol. Okay. This is the symbol for relationship. So you have to change this symbol to equal. Right. But when you change this symbol to equal, you have to tambah satu K. But it doesn't necessarily have to be K lah. You can tambah any alphabet you want. Right. And this alphabet is a constant. Okay. It's a constant. It's a fixed number. Okay, constant means fixed number. And then don't forget, to, you still have to times with 1 over cube root S. And please remember, when you take a value times with a fraction, you will only times the atas punya number. So K times 1 will be K over cube root S. And now, you will try, you will find K. Okay, now you will find K. But in order to find K, you need to have what? You need to have R and S, right? Otherwise, you can't find the K. So how to find K? You need to have R and S. Other tak dia bagi R and S. Yes, R is 4, S is 27. That's why in the beginning, I asked you why they give you this run, right? And I told you it's to find K. So R is 4, and then S is 27. But don't forget the cube root. It's cube root 27. Okay, you can press calculator. Cube root 27 will give you 3, and K will be 4 times 3, which is 12. So now you can rewrite this equation. Okay, don't rewrite from here. Rewrite from here is better. It will be R equals to 12 over cube root S. Okay, it means you will just rewrite this whole thing, but the K, you let up 12, right? So what is the answer? D is your answer, all right? <coughs> okay, number 21. Let's read the question. Which of the following is the most accurate description for mathematical model? Okay, this is definitely from 5, last chapter, chapter 8. It's called mathematical modeling. In Bahasa Melayu, but modelan mathematic. So let's read A, B, C, D and see which which one is the accurate uh, definition ataupun description for mathematical model. Eh? We choose the answer yang paling makes sense lah. So A says what? A representation of a system or scenario that is used to gain understanding of a mathematic question and to predict future behaviour. B. B. Uh, a representation of a system or scenario that is used to gain qualitative and or quantitative quanti I think they spell it wrongly is quantitative understanding of some real world problems and to predict future behavior. C. A representation of a system or scenario that is used to interrelate mathematical formula and to predict future behavior. D. A mathematical representation in linear quadratic or exponential function function to predict future behavior. Okay, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is B. Because of this keyword, quali qualitative and quantitative. Okay, Let me explain why. This, you can refer your textbook. Okay, So, I will open up a textbook page for you now. Alright, so, okay, I'm showing you here. Alright, this is the textbook page. This is page uh, 228. Yeah, 228. And you can refer, uh, okay, you can refer down here. They got give you the definition. A mathematical model is a representation of a system or scenario that is used to gain qualitative and quantitative understanding of some real-world problem and to predict future behavior. So now we come back to the question. So the answer has to be B. Lah. Yeah. So the keyword here is qualitative, quantitative. Right? So yeah, that's all. Okay. Usually uh, when they come out this chapter, uh, they will ask the six steps. Yeah, I will show you. Eh? Usually when they come out in paper one, they will ask these six steps. So students have to have to memorize these six steps. Yeah, the these six, right? But this paper is a bit weird. It's like the first time I do that they come out this chapter, but they never ask these six steps. They ask this definition, okay? But uh, yeah, but this is the correct answer. Lah. So make sure you know the, you re just remember the keyword. You don't have to remember the whole thing. Just remember qualitative, quantitative, okay? So yeah, anyways, this is how I will do it. Let's continue. Okay, number 22. Let's read the question. Diagram 3 shows two parallel lines. So this and this is parallel. RST and UVW. 
find the value of x which is located here okay how to find it before i do this question i just want to mention this is form one right and you have to learn you learn you learn this in form one and let me tell you what is this chapter i think it's called line and angles lines and angles right and let me explain a bit let's explain, explain the whole concept you learn about one thing called the ZFUC. Okay, I don't know you remember what is the ZFUC. I'll explain to you. First thing is I will explain the Z first. So Z, we call it alternate angles. Alternate angles. For alternate angles, you will see this Z shape, right? And what is alternate? When you have two parallel lines and it forms a Z shape like this, this angle and this angle will be same. Right? So if I give you like, let's say this is angle X, this will be X also, it will be the same. But what if the Z is like this? It will be same also. Yeah, this angle and this angle will be same also. Right? So this is called alternate angles. The, so this one, done. Next one I want to talk about is called the, it's called the corresponding angle, which is the F. So for F, we call it corresponding, corresponding angle. Corresponding angle, you will see a F shape, right? But of course, it has to be parallel also. If it's not parallel, then we cannot use the ZFUC. So for F, uh, what it means is when you see an F shape, okay, let me use a highlight. So when you see an F shape like this, this angle and this angle will be same. So X and X like this. Okay? But you can also say that your F will also can also be like this, which is like this, right? Okay, let me make it suskit. So your F can also be like this. Do you agree? It's like a terbalik punya F lah. So can you tell me if your F is terbalik like that, ah, which angle and which angle same? This one and this one. Ah. So this, if this is angle Y, this is angle Y. Right? But you can also say the F is like this. Let's use another color. Let's use yellow color. So you can also say your F is like this. Like this. Do you agree? Like this. Right? Like uh, pointing towards left. Okay. So I'll use yellow color. It's like this. Like this, like this. So if it's like this, your F, then where, where is your angle summer? Your corresponding will be here and here, right? So this, let's say this is Z, this will be Z. So uh, I, I will just make it simple for you. Corresponding means when you see a F, this angle, this angle, same. Yeah, that's all. Alternate is when you see a Z shape, and then this line, this line, parallel, this one, this one, same. Okay, actually corresponding also have to be parallel. Okay, okay last one is the UC. UC is... Interior angle. Okay, interior angle. So when we have a UC, like for example, if a shape looks like this or like this, but it has to be parallel also, eh? it has to be parallel, 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 parallel. Then what happens to the interior angle? The interior angle, when you plus together, you will get 180. Okay, same thing here. If it looks like this, the interior angle means the inside angle plus together equals to 180. Okay, these two angles add together. So let's call this A and B, A and B. And yeah, if you have uh, this shape, the A and B plus together is 180, right? So this is where the Z, F, U, C come from. Z is the alternate angle. F is corresponding. Interior is when you have the U, C shape and then the inside angle add together is 180. Okay, if you understand all these things, you can solve this question easily. So let's go. This is 118. I want to find X, right? So what I will do now is I can find this angle, right? So I'll just find whatever I can find. Okay, so 180 minus 118, uh, I get 62, all right? I, I think you know why why I can find this one, right? It's because uh, straight line, uh, so 180, lah, so minus 1, yeah, I get 62. And now, what I will do now is I can find this angle, okay? But actually, if I find this angle, it doesn't help, okay? Because, uh, okay, one circle is 360, but if you minus 260, you will get 100, right? But it cannot help me find the X angle because the X angle drew here. So uh, in order to apply the ZF UC, I need to tamba satu line, right? I need to make it into a Z, right? And the only way here to make it into Z is to tamba satu line. So what I will do now is I will erase the 100 and I will tamba satu line like this, okay? And I will tell you why. I will tell you why I tamba this line. So this line will be parallel with the other two lines as well. And the reason why I tamba is because I can apply the ZFUC because if you look at this, can you see the Z shape? Z, 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 right? So if the angle bawah here is X, this will be X also, right? But we already know this one is 62 because Z, 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 ma. 
62, 62, right? And the whole thing just now is how much? 100, right? You remember just now? I write 100 just now. So to get X, is just 100 minus 62. Uh. So you press calculator, you get the answer already. 38. Okay? Of course, there is also another, how to say? You can, you might, uh, okay? If you don't want to use that, sometimes you can use the FUC also, okay? But this question, actually, you can solve it just by using the Z. Okay, so... Yeah, hope you understand and also hope you remember all this ZFUC semua benda ni penting. Eh? Okay, let's go to question number 23. Let's read the question. Diagram 4 shows a kite-shaped botanical garden. So this is a garden but it's in a kite-shaped. The length of BD is 720 meter. Okay, BD, I think I have to draw the lines myself because they never draw for me B. So I'll just draw it myself and then just label 720 meter but i need to know that it's for, from for the whole ajang, eh? and then the shaded area which is 35 percent of the whole garden so i think it's talking about this area and this area is actually 35 percent of the whole garden right and then it says if the shaded area is 31500 meter square calculate the length of ac okay let's think about this how can i do this question uh I think uh, I need to find the area of the whole thing first. Yeah. Okay. It means I have to find the area of kite. Okay. Why I need to find area of kite? So that after I get the area of kite, I can times with 35% to get the area of this shaded part. And then... Uh, wait. But, but I cannot find the area of kite because it's not enough information. Uh, let's think about this. How can I do this question? Okay, the shaded area, actually, I have it already. It's 31500. So, this is 31500, right? So, it means... Uh, okay, I think I know already. If the shaded area is 31500, it means 35%. 35% is equivalent to 31500. Do you, do you understand? It means that percentage, 35%, is actually 31500. So, can I find 100%? Because 100%, it means the area of kite, right? So, 35% is this. So, what is 100%? Okay, I think I can take 31500 times with 100 over 35. Uh, yeah, you know why? Because uh, uh, 35, uh, okay, 35% 35 means 35 over 100, right? It means this 31500 is actually occupies 35 over 100. It means uh, you can take 31500, divide 35. The reason why you divide 35 is because you want to know 1% is how much. You understand, right? Because yeah, 35 uh, 35% is equivalent to 31500. So when you take this one, divide 35, you are calculating 1% how much. And after you calculate 1%, you times with 100. Yeah, then you know what, what is the total area, 100% already. Okay, That is why I, I divide 35 times 100. Okay, so let's press. 31500 divide 35 times 100. So I get 90,000. Okay, 90,000. So 90,000 is the is the area of the whole garden, the 100%. So I'll write here and I'll write here also. Okay, now they want to find length of AC. Okay, where's AC? I think it's talking about this, this panjang. So how can I find area of AC? Well, we have to use the area of kite formula. And what is the area of kite formula? It will be the diagonals multiplied together divided by 2, which is the AC times with 720 divided by 2. So remember the formula for area of kite. It will be the diagonals times diagonal divided by 2. Okay, let me show you. Let me open up my notes. So, okay, this is the one. Okay, I found this uh, picture in Google. Yeah, And this picture is actually very helpful. So I'll just show it to you. So area of polygon. The first one is area of triangle. Yeah, all this is like SPM relevant to SPM. So 102 times base times height, rectangle, uh, just the base times height, but they call it bit times length. Okay, la, it's the same thing. La. Depends on how you want to call it. Eh? Square is just this one times this one. So it's just A square. Yeah, no problem. Next one is parallelogram. Yeah, parallelogram is also base times height, but remember to take the perpendicular height. It means the one yang 90 degree, not the sanget punya light. Okay. And then next one is rhombus. Okay, rhombus is actually looks like a kite. So that's why uh, the formula for rhombus and kite uh, is the same. D1 times D2 over 2. D1 times D2 over 2. 
and the D1 and the D2 are the diagonals. Can you see this formula and this formula is the same? You just take the diagonals times together divide two. Hey, what is diagonal? Huh? Diagonal means uh, the line from corner to corner. Then we call it diagonal. This one also we call it diagonal. But what about this one? This one is not diagonal. Even though this is corner to corner, this one is the side. So we don't call it diagonal. Diagonal is the lines in between, in the middle. So there's two diagonal and just take the two diagonal length times divide two. So this is the formula to find area of height or you can say rhombus like they, they are the same they are like the same formula yeah and then there is trapezium one over two times the sum of parallel sides times with the perpendicular distance yeah like that and then there is also pentagon there is also hexagon okay the pentagon so far i never use it yet yeah in all the trial paper i did i so far i never how to say i never stumbled upon question yang suruh cari area of pentagon yet but if you want, need the formula, here, here, here's the formula. Lah. But the hexagon, I pernah jumpa uh, in Selangor paper. Yeah, you can refer to my Selangor. I think it's paper two, last question, last question, uh, D, seventeen D. So my last video is actually on the Selangor paper. So yeah, I actually end up they actually end up asking area of hexagon, and I did explain using this formula. Yeah. So if you want the explanation for this question, yeah, you can refer to my Selangor video. Uh, but it's paper two, last question. Yeah, you just skip to the last minute and then you will see the question. Uh, they actually asked me to find area of hexagon. Uh, okay, let's come back to this question. So now you understand uh, why is why the kite area is like the AC times with 720 BD. Because these two are the diagonal. So just take the two diagonal times divide two. So what is 720 divide two? You will easily get 360. And then you will just take 90,000 divide 360. So, time to press calculator. Okay, I don't know if you get the same. My calculator give me 250. So, AC is 250 and the unit, I think, is meter, yeah. Because everything is in meter, meter, yeah. So, this is in meter also. And they want to find in meter also, right? So, there should be an answer here. A, B, C, D. Yep, I saw it already. It's D. Okay. So, hope you understand. Let's go. Okay, number 24. Which of the following is a true statement? Okay, so A, the interior angle of regular hexagon is 120. Yep, this is true. Okay, the reason why I know this is because I have already. Yeah, for hexagon, uh, the each interior angle is 120. So this is true, so A is the answer. <laughs> okay, okay, but let's read B, C, D also. Exterior angle of nonagon is 45. Okay, this, this one actually I didn't have, so I'm not sure, right? And then sum of interior angle of heptagon is 750. Uh yeah, I because I know the answer is A already, right? And I'm so confident because I got hafal, so that's why I know B C D is false already. Okay, but don't worry, I'll explain to you why it's false. Huh? D it says number of axes of symmetry of regular octagon is six. Okay, well, let's explain the first one first. The interior okay, all this statement mentioned about interior, exterior, right? So let's talk about polygon. So I will draw a pentagon here. This one we call it pentagon, huh? It has five sides. Okay. So pentagon. If I say it's a regular pentagon, it means uh, all five sides same, sama panjang, and the interior angle also will be same. Okay, same same angle. If semua sama panjang, the angle will be same also. And what what is the formula we can use to find the interior angle? We will use this formula, sum of interior angle formula, and the formula looks like this: n minus two times hundred eighty. Okay. But we need to know something. If we panjangkan this line, 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 there will be another angle outside here. All right? And this angle outside, we actually call it exterior angle. And the exterior angle plus with the interior angle will always be 180 because they form a straight line. So interior angle plus exterior angle is always 180 degrees when you add these two angles together. You agree, right? Because they are straight line. Okay? So... Let's say I want to know hexagon and it's regular. So what I can do to find the sum of interior angle is I'll just, I know hexagon got six sides. So I'll just take six minus two times with 180. And then I'll get, let's press calculator, I'll get 720. But since it's a regular hexagon, regular means sakata, means all six sides sama panjang, it means that all this angle will be same as well. So I can take 720, which is the sum of all this angle, divide by six. Because there's six of them. That's why you get 120 each. That is why I know A is definitely true. So A is the answer already, right? But I want to explain why B is wrong. So they say the exterior of regular nonagon is 45, right? Okay. 
let me tell you what is the sum of exterior angle. Sum of exterior angle will always be 360. Will always be 360. So if you imagine this one, the red color angle, what happens if you rotate this very fast? This red color angle will eventually form a circle. So if you want to know that whether the exterior angle of Nonagon is 45 or not, you can take 45 times 9. Because if it's a Nonagon, it has 9 sides. And if it has 9 sides, it will have 9 interior angle and 9 exterior angle. Look at this diagram. This is a pentagon. How many sides the pentagon have? 5 sides. And how many interior angle? 5. How many exterior angle? 5 also. It means uh, the number of exterior angle depends on the number of sides. If you have 5 sides, there will be 5 exterior angle. So if it's non there will be 9. So 45 times 9, do you get 360? No. You get 405. That is why B is false. Okay? B is false. You understand, eh? Because some of exterior angle will always be 360. Right? If you... Okay, you can also do it another way. There's another way to prove that B is false, which is you've used this formula also. Lah. Okay? But you, when you use this formula, you muscle 9 here. Okay, and then you press 9 minus 2 times 180. And then afterwards, after you do, after you press this, you would divide the whole thing by 9. Because it's a regular nonagon, right? But then, uh, if you do it like this, it's a bit slow. Lah, eh? Okay, I'll just show it to you. 9 minus 2 times 180, you will get 1260. But this is the sum of all angle in the nonagon. But since it has 9 angle and all 9 is same, because regular, you can divide by 9, you will get 140. But 140 is the interior. To get the exterior, you have to take 180 minus 140, which is you get 40. So the exterior is 40, the interior is 140. That's why this is wrong now because they write 45. Okay. But this uh, but you can actually prove it very fast. If they want exterior, just remember the sum of exterior angle will always be 360. Okay, hope you understand. Lah. So that's why this is false, huh? And then what about C? Sum of interior angle is 750. Well, we can use this formula also. But heptagon got seven sides, so it'll be seven minus two times hundred eighty. You, if you press this, you will know whether it's true or false. So my calculator give me nine hundred. Yeah. So the sum of interior angle inside heptagon is nine hundred. So this is wrong also because it's seven fifty. And then what about the number of axes of symmetry of regular octagon? Okay, number of axes of symmetry of regular octagon will be eight, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it's okay. Let me show you my notes. Uh, wait. Uh, let me open up my. Okay, I have a notes here. Wait, uh, let me find it. Let me find the file. Number of axes. I think it's this one. Lines of symmetry. Yeah, I think I found it already. Uh, wait. Uh. Uh, okay, this one is number of diagonal. I don't want that. I want number of symmetry. Symmetry. I think this one. Yeah. Okay, let me just open it quickly. Uh, lines of symmetry. Uh, wait, uh. wait, 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 let me open it, okay, let me find it, okay, pictures, okay, yeah, this is the one, can you see it, yeah, this is the one, so you can read here, okay, lines of symmetry, so if it's a tri irregular triangle, irregular means all different sides of triangle, there's no line, isosceles, satu, equilateral, three, and so on, uh, you can just thank Allah some more. Uh, okay, for octagon, octagon, uh, yeah, I was right. There's eight axis of symmetry if it's a regular octagon. If you want to know for nonagon, it's written here 9, 9, 10, 10, 7, 6, 5. Yeah, so yeah, basically it's like very straightforward. If it's regular, uh, the number of axis of symmetry will be same with the number of sides. Okay, if it's regular, but if it's not regular, then it might be different. Like you see, when all four sides are not same, there are only two only. But if all four sides regular, same size, like a square, then it will have four. Okay? If it's if all the sides sama panjang. That is why when it's regular, 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 sama panjang, uh, the number of line of symmetry is always equal to the number of sides. Okay. Anyways, let's just continue. I'm spending so much time on this question, but I think it's worth explaining. Yeah. So, I think you know why the answer is A, right? Because... Axis of symmetry in a regular octagon should be 8, not 6. So A is the answer. Okay, let's continue. 25. Let's read the question. Diagram 5 shows a circle PQRS with center O. Okay, I can see it. POST is a straight line. Okay, 
when we do this question, we need to hafal a few rules. Okay, there is one rule. Okay, one how to say, one format ataupun one formula lah. Okay, yeah, you can hafal. It's called cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, cyclic quadrilateral. What is cyclic quadrilateral? It means ah uh, when there is a quadrilateral inside the circle. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a quadrilateral inside the circle. So what is quadrilateral? Quadrilateral is a shape that has four sides, right? But these four sides ah, uh, the vertices has to be on the side of the circle. Then only we can use this formula. Okay, and the formula is like this. Let's say this is A, B, C, D. And if you see this ah, uh, you should know that the A plus C is equals to hundred eighty, and then B plus D equals to 180. But I want to ex uh, repeat one more time. You can only use this formula when it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Cyclic quadrilateral means there is a quadrilateral, means a shape yang ada empat side dalam circle. But you have to make sure all four vertices has to be on the side of the circle. Then only it's considered cyclic quadrilateral. Let me ask you, is this a cyclic quadrilateral? Let me uh, put it marker. Marker, marker. Where's my marker? Uh, red color. Okay, is this a cyclic quadrilateral? Yes or no? Yes, because all the vertices P, Q, R, S is on the side of the circle. So it's considered uh, cyclic quadrilateral. It means we can use this formula or the opposite angle plus together is 180. Opposite plus is 180. So can I find Y? Yes, because opposite plus is 180, right? So to find Y, I just take 180 minus 125. Okay? And then you will get 55. So therefore, this is 55. And then how to find here? Uh, well, I think I can, okay, this is 2y, right? So, if this is 2y, this will be 180 minus 2y, right? Because the sum will be, sum will be 180, right? So, how to find x, huh? Okay, this is a bit difficult. How can we find x? Let's think about this. Huh. Are these two lines parallel? If it's parallel, maybe I can use the ZFUC, but they never mention it's parallel, so I cannot assume it's parallel. So how else I can do it? What's, what's the other way? Mm, let's see. One, two, five. Um, okay, the total angle inside the quadrilateral must be 360, right? So can we maybe use that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What am I doing? Hey, wait, wait. Hey, 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 hello, hello. The Y is 55, right? Okay, if I know the Y is 55, means I know this angle already. Lah, because this angle is 2Y. So I can just take 2 times 5 and then get 110, right? Because this Y and this Y is the same Y, right? Uh, so it's the same 55. So 55 times 2, I press calculate is 110. And now I can get this angle, lah. Okay, the sum will be 180. So 180 minus 110 will be 70. And if you take 70 plus 110, you will really get 180. And now how to find x? Well, this is a straight line. If it's a straight line, the sum of these two angles will be 180. So 180 minus 70 is 110. So the answer is A. Okay? So yeah, it's just very easy. Okay, I just tak nampak satu... I just, how to say? Miss satu detail. Eh? So yeah, this is how I would do it. And remember, uh, this formula only can use it when it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, when it's the quadrilateral is inside the circle and all the four corner is on the side of the circle, then only we use this formula. If it's not, then don't use this formula. Okay, let's continue. Okay, number four, 26. This looks like a solid geometry question. Okay, let's read. Diagram 6 shows a solid made by combining a cylinder and a cone. Okay, this is cylinder, this is cone. Now it says the height of the cylinder is equal to the radius while the slanted height of cone is twice its radius. Okay, I'm already lost. Let's read one more time. The height of cylinder is equal to the radius. Uh, but this is talking about cylinder. Eh? So the height of the cylinder, usually we call it H. And then the radius of cylinder, the radius of cylinder is R, right? But they already mentioned that the height is equal to the radius. It means uh, they have the same length. It means, let's say the height is 5 cm, the radius is also 5 cm. If the height is 7 cm, the radius is 7. So, H and R is the same value. Okay, And then it says that the slanted height of the cone is twice the radius. But if you look carefully, the radius of cylinder is same as the radius of cone. right? 
yeah, because they are joined, they are joined together like this means the radius of cylinder is will be the same with the radius of cone, and the slanted height means the second punya height, ah, slanted means the second punya height is twice the radius. It means this is two times r, right? So with all this information, now what they want to find, calculate the radius of cylinder, which is the same as the radius of cone. If the total surface area of combined solid is a quarter of volume of cylinder, wow how to approach this question surface area of combined solid so i will just write tsa stands for total surface area of the whole solid of i will just say of solid lah it means the whole thing lah the whole thing is equals to a quarter quarter means one over four okay times with the volume of cylinder right so first thing first we need to know what is the formula right if you don't know formula we cannot do this topic is about formula eh? so let's talk about volume of cylinder all right this formula is given in the exam by the way it's pi r square h okay pi r square h okay r is the radius h is the height now let's talk about total surface area okay for total surface area of cone it will be pi r square plus pi r s because when you open the cone you will get two surface one surface is the this shape and then another surface is the circle so the pi r square come from this circular surface and then the pi r s comes from this surface the next one is total surface area of cylinder for the cylinder the formula will be 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h and this formula also given in the exam yeah and when you open because when you open up the cylinder you get this shape and the 2 pi r square comes from these two surface because this is a circle so pi r square pi r square 2 pi r square and then the 2 pi r h comes from this surface this rectangle surface because the panjang here is the same as the circumference here and the circumference formula is 2 pi r times the height right so these were are all the formulas that we will be using for this question but but when you are finding total surface area you will only consider the outside surface it means when we find the total surface area of this solid, we will not use the whole formula for cylinder. We will only take pi r square plus 2 pi r h. And the reason is because this surface is not outside. If you look at the cylinder, okay, I don't have to calculate one of this circle because total surface area uh, is when we find total surface area, we are only finding the outside surface. So can you tell me in this diagram, which surface is outside? It's the one at the bottom and this rectangle only. That's why it's only pi r square plus 2 pi r h. The one, this surface, we don't have to calculate because it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's not outside, okay? And then plus with the surface area of cone. But will we use this whole formula? No, we will only use the pi r s formula. We will not take the pi r square because pi r square comes from the circular surface. And I already mentioned why I cannot take this surface because it's inside. I only when we're finding total surface area, we are only taking the outside surface. And then this whole thing is equals to one over four times with the volume of cylinder, which is pi r square h. I think the pi you can just write pi and then r square. What is the radius of cylinder? It's r, so just times with r square, and then height of cylinder is just h. But do you remember they say height of cylinder is equals to the radius? Therefore, I think I can change the h to r here. And also, this h also can change to r. Because this h is also, uh, yeah, this h is also the height of the cylinder, right? So, yeah, I can change to r. And then what about this s? This s is the slanted height. But I remember they say it's two times the radius. So, I can change the s to 2r. So, now I can just focus on simplifying this and hopefully it will give me the answer okay pi r square i'll just write pi r square and then 2 pi r r means 2 pi r square so i'm just gonna write it down and then pi r times 2 r which is also 2 pi r square yeah because 2 times pi is 2 pi r times r is r square so done equals to pi r square r okay when you take r square times r you will get pi r power 3 because when you take have the same base the power when you times two number with the same base, the power need to plus. This one is r power one, so two plus one is three. And then times one over four is just over four like that, right? But now, uh, 
you should get rid of the fraction. So everything times four. Lah. So times times four times four times four. So you will end up getting four pi r square plus eight pi r square plus eight pi r square equals to pi r power three. And now you can simplify. How to simplify? Okay, all of these numbers, they have pi, right? They have pi. So you can divide all this with pi. But at the same time, they also all can divide r square. Do you understand? Because uh, if we divide by pi, the pi will hilang for everyone, right? But if you look carefully, they all also can divide by r square, right? Because they all have r square. So divide by pi r square. You cannot divide r power 3 because, yeah, some of these don't have r power 3. But all of this is definitely can divide by pi r squared. So let's see what you get here. You will just end up with 4 and then plus 8 plus 8 equals to, okay, pi, when divide pi, we can, uh, it means nothing left. Lah. And then r power 3 divide r power 2 is just r because when you have uh, two value with the same base, divide the power with minus. It means r power 3 divide r power 2 is same with r power 3 minus 2, which is r power 1, which is r. Lah. That is why I just write r here. So now I can find the radius. 4 plus 8 plus 8, you can use calculator, you will get 20. So yeah, there is answer. D is the answer. They ask you to calculate radius, right? So yeah, this is how I would do it. So I think that's all. Okay, 27. Diagram 7 shows a Cartesian plane. So we have y-axis, we have x-axis, and they put a point here. They call it S prime. Okay, let's uh, write down the coordinate. Negative 4, negative 2. Okay, let's see what they want me to do with this point. Let's read the question. Point S prime is the image. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is the image huh? of point S. It means definitely S is the object. Okay, S prime is the image. S is the object. So, under a 90 degree anticlockwise rotation about point negative 1, 1. Meanwhile, point S is the image of another point, point R, under reflection on the y-axis. Find the coordinates of R. Okay, I don't want to confuse myself with this line first because... I don't even know where is my point S, right? So if I try to focus too much on this, I cannot do later. Now let's just focus on finding where is point S first. So they already said S prime is the image of S under 90 degree anticlockwise rotation about this point. So this is definitely the center of rotation. Whenever I teach my own student, I always say the same thing. If the soalan got give you center of rotation, you will straight away draw a cross there. So negative one, negative one is located here. So straight away, draw a big cross. In negative one, negative one. So I'm just gonna uh let's make the line. Uh yeah, I think it's good enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just draw a line here. Okay, and I'll draw a line here. Okay, because I want to draw a cross. Uh, so okay, wait. So yeah, like that. So this is a cross. And what I will do here is I will put the direction atas here. So since they got say anti-clockwise 90 degree, it means that anti-clockwise is like this, right? Because Clockwise means ikut arajam. So this is arajam, right? So lawan arajam is be like this, right? So yep. Now they say 90 degree. But if you rotate like this, uh, it means 90 degree is here, 180 is here, 270 is here, right? But, 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 you are not finding image. You are finding object. It means uh, this S prime is suda rotate punya. Suda rotate 90 degree clockwise. It means you want to rotate, you want to cari balik. So when you cari balik, uh, you have to terbalikkan the direction. So instead of going anti-clockwise 90, you have to go clockwise 90. It means this arrow have to terbalik jadi clockwise. The reason why is because this is the image. Okay, if I'm finding image, I will just follow the instruction. But if I'm finding object, I have to terbalikkan whatever they say here. So 90 degree anticlockwise becomes 90 degree clockwise. So instead of going that way, I'm, I will go opposite direction and my answer will be somewhere here. Okay. But where will it be? Where will it be? Okay. I will count from center to this point, but I will count horizontal first. So horizontal, how many kota? One, two, three. Horizontal three unit and then vertical one unit. But I already know my answer is here. So, horizontal 3, vertical 1. What you do now is you terbalikkan. Horizontal 3, vertical 1, terbalik. Horizontal 1, vertical 3. And we already know it's here. So, you'll move 1 here and then vertical 3. 1, 2, 3. This is the answer. And this will be the point S, which is the object of this point. Right? And this point, durut dekat negative 2, 2. Okay? I hope you understand my explanation. 
Remember, when you rotate 90 degree, ah, memang you kena terbalikkan the horizontal and the vertical punya kotak. Okay, but if you rotate 180, tak payah. Ah, only 90 saja kena terbalikkan. Ah. So, that's why horizontal 3, vertical 1, terbalikkan jadi horizontal 1, vertical 3. But of course, before you, uh, sebelum you kira the kotak, you need to know where your answer jatuh first. Is it at the top right corner or the top left corner or the bottom left, bottom right? Right? So, now I know it's bottom left, then only you start to count words the answer okay this is not the answer yet because they still mention s is the image of r so s is the image okay of another point point r under reflection y axis find the coordinate of r so s is actually image of another point point r so point r reflect y axis will get you this so this is the y axis right so imagine which point reflect y axis will give you point s let's count how many kota from here to y axis one, so maybe reflect y axis, it will be one put as well. So this must be my point R, okay. And if you try to reflect point R on y axis, you would really get point S, right? So the answer is point R, which is two two lah. So they ask you to find coordinates. I think the answer is two two. Let's go to A B C D and see whether I have two two as my answer. So yeah, the answer is D. Two two is the answer. Let's continue. 28. Diagram 8 shows a square P. Okay, the moment I see the word square, I will immediately just put these lines because they all have, uh, means all these four sides are same same length. And this, uh, what shows a square P is the scale drawing of square Q. So this is also another square. And they say P is the drawing. It means P is the image. And then uh, Q is the object. Okay? Because, uh, okay, this is under form 1, form 2, form 3. It's a topic called scale drawing. Okay, skill drawing. And a lot of students confuse this with the form 5 one. Because form 5 also, you got learn something called the scale factor in the enlargement. But actually, the scale drawing is a little bit different with the form 5 one. So let me just explain a bit what is scale drawing. Scale drawing, huh? object is the actual, the actual size. The actual size, okay? The keyword here is actual, okay? Or the real one, okay? The real size of it. Image is not real. Not real means what? It's a drawing. Ataupun, you can say it's a, uh, let's see, it's a it's a plan. Okay, it's a floor plan. It's a plan, right? It means it's not the real size. Okay, it's not the real size. Okay, so yeah, this is how I would uh, explain the scale drawing. So when they say P is a scale drawing of Q, it means P is image. Q is all. Okay, yeah. So now this is state the scale use. Okay, which formula I can use to find the scale factor? Okay, the formula for scale factor is uh, image divide object, right? Image divide object or uh, it means like this, lah, image ratio object, okay? Or you can also say, uh, because some of you might use the form 5 formula, which is k equals to i per o, which is the same thing, lah, right? Because if you do like that also, you get the same, right? You would just take the image, what's the image? Uh, 10.5. And then over object, which is 3.5. Oh, wait, 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 wait. By the way, you cannot use area. Huh? You cannot use area. Huh? If you want to use this formula, you must put in the length. You must put in the length. Cannot use area. If you use area, huh, have to tambah satu square root. Because if you use area, huh, then, uh, yeah, I have to square root. Lah. I have to, uh, because the if you use area, then cannot use this formula. Already. You have to use another formula, which is area of image equals k square times area of object. But, that one, right? but for this one, you can do it like that. So 10.5 divide 3.5, you press calculator, you will get 3, right? It means the scale factor is 3. But you need to know, uh, a lot of students, uh, they will go go and circle D. Or maybe they circle C, okay? Like, hey, hello. Wrong, lah, bro. You wrong. You do it like that, you wrong. Let me tell you. Okay, a lot of students will get confused because they because they learn in Form 5, right? In Form 5, uh, this is how you do it, right? But the answer is not C and D. Uh. Let me explain. Because when we find scale drawing, uh, the scale has to always be one ratio. It, for example, if it's image ratio object, it's the same as image bahagi object, right? So you will get 10.5 ratio 3.5, which is same as what I write here. But when I tekan this, I get 3, right? It means this is 3 ratio 1. Do you understand? But you cannot circle D. You cannot circle D because, uh, 
okay, 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 okay. Let me explain like that. Ratio is actually same with fraction. Yeah, a fraction can actually convert to ratio. So if I say 10.5 over 3.5 is the same as 10.5 ratio 3.5. So if I say 3 over 1, it means 3 ratio 1. Eh? But you cannot circle D because scale drawing, the pan punya number is always 1. It has to be always 1. Yeah. So 3 how to become 1? Have to bahagi 3, right? So this also have to bahagi 3. So this will be 1 over 3. So the scale drawing used is A. That's why A is the answer. Okay, so just remember, for form five, I know you didn't, you didn't learn this because in form five you just want the scale factor like like for example three much two such. But the lower form ah, when they ask for scale drawing ah, the in front number will has to always be one, ah. Uh, so that that's why, that's why you have to do it like that. Okay, okay. Hopefully you understand what I what I mentioned lah. Okay, thirty nine diagram nine shows a right angle triangle JKM. KLM is a straight line. The moment I see this, I know it's a trigo question. Right angle, right angle. So 90 degree. So there is one right angle, triangle, but there's actually another one. First one is this one. The the another the, the other triangle, triangle is the big one. Yeah. So let's see what information they gave us. Sine alpha equals to 8 over 17. Okay. I pernah tengok satu student, uh, dia bought macam tu tau. Sine is opposite bahagi hypotenuse. Dia straight away to this 8 sini, 17 sini. Eh, hello, tak boleh lah. Ini mana boleh. When you use the trigo formula, you have to make sure it's right angle triangle. If it's right angle triangle, baru boleh you tentukan opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Is this a right angle triangle? No, this is not a right angle triangle. This is not a right angle triangle. So, if you want to label the opposite adjacent hypotenuse, you have to make sure it's right angle. So, which triangle I have to use? The big one, this one. Yeah, this one. So, remember, so kato, so sine is so, so the opposite is 8, hypotenuse 17. So, if this is your angle, your opposite is actually this line. Okay? Not the JL line, the JK line. Eh? And then the 90, we call it hypotenuse. And then the remaining, we call it adjacent. So, the opposite is 8, right? So, just erase this and write 8. And then, uh, hypotenuse 17, just erase the H and write 17. Okay, can I find the adjacent? Yes, we can use Pythagoras theorem. Even though the question never asked me to find now, I'll just find it, I don't care. So I'll just find the KM Panjang, which is using Pythagoras theorem, okay? Which is uh, bracket square, bracket square, but plus or minus, uh, minus, because you will only plus when you are finding the longer side. This is not the longer side, so minus. So it'll be 17 square minus eight square. If you quickly press this, you'll get two to five, and then you'll get 15. It means the KM panjang is 15. Now let's see what it says. KL ratio KM is three ratio five. It means KL divided by KM equals to three over five because ratio can change to fraction. And you already have the KM length. You just find it just now. Right, so you can just substitute inside here. It could over fifteen equals to three over five because KM is fifteen. So now you can get your KL length, and how you do that is just you pinna the fifteen lah. This one is bahagi when you pinna jadi darab. So fifteen times three over five, you will get nine. So now this is nine, and what is fifteen minus nine? Four, right? Hey, fifteen minus nine bukan four lah. Fifteen minus nine is six. Sorry, okay, silap. Uh -huh. So now you can. See what they want. Calculate the value of tangent theta. Okay, your theta is actually here. So how do we find tangent theta? We have to take okay, so ka towa towa tangent so owa. So I have to take the opposite adjacent. But you don't tell me, oh sir, the opposite is 17, the adjacent is six. Hey, hello. I told you many times already. You can only determine the opposite hypotenuse adjacent when it's a right angle triangle. Is this a right angle triangle? No, bro. So you cannot tell me the opposite is 17. It's wrong. So if you look carefully, the angle is not even inside the right angle triangle because you have to use this right angle triangle to do. Let me highlight it for you. Okay, you are not using the big one this time. Huh? You are using the small right angle triangle to do. Okay, but if you look carefully, your angle is actually outside the right angle triangle. So when it's outside the right angle triangle, what you have to do? Take the reference angle. What is reference angle? Reference angle means angle towards x-axis. Okay? Or you can say the, uh, this angle. Uh, this is the reference angle. So, I will use this angle to de determine the opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So, my opposite will be the 8. Okay? Okay, let me erase. There's too many arrows and it's too confusing. So, let me just erase all this. So, my opposite, uh, this angle, uh, this is the reference angle. So, this is my opposite. And my uh, hypotenuse is actually this one. 
Okay, look at the blue color line, uh, not the red color one, uh, the JL. And then the addition will be my 9. Uh, right? So since I want opposite divide addition, it will be 8 over 9. Okay, tapi, tapi, you are using the reference angle, right? Your real angle is actually outside the right angle triangle and it's which quadrant? You can use your eyes to determine it's actually quadrant 2, right? Because obviously this angle is bigger than 90 already because 90 degrees is like this. So it's quadrant 2 angle and if in quadrant 2, siapa positive? Add sugar to coffee. In second quadrant only, sign positive. And now you are not finding sign, you are finding tangent. So, kena tamar negative. So, this is your answer. Negative 8 over 9. So, I repeat one more time. When you want to do soka to and you realize your angle is outside the right angle triangle, you can take the angle towards X, which is the reference angle. Okay? So, the reference angle is here. Use that to determine opposite hypotenuse adjacent. And then, after you get the answer, just check whether you need to tamar positive or... Uh, uh, just check whether you have to tamar negative, depending on which... Quadrant is your angle. Lah. For this, it's quadrant 2. That's why you have to add negative. So let's go to ABCD and bullet the negative 8 over 9. So yeah, there is one answer here. B is the correct answer. Okay, let's continue. Number 30. Diagram 10 shows a circle with center O. State the number of tangents to the circle. You need to understand what is the meaning of tangent so that you can do this question. Tangent means uh, the line will touch the circle at one point. Then we call it tangent. All right? And this point, we call it tangent point. Right. Oh, and one more extra information. When the, the circle center tarit to tangent, uh, the tarit to the tangent point will always be 90 degree. Okay. So which one is tangent? One. Yeah, because it touched the circle at one point. This one is also tangent. So two tangent. Three tangent. Is this a tangent? No, because it cuts the circle at two points. Tangent can only touch at one point. So there's only one, two, three tangent. So the answer is B. And extra information. Center target tangent point, center target tangent point, center target point will be 90, 90, 90. Okay, so yeah, this is the answer. Let's continue with question 31. Diagram 11 shows a parallelogram P, uh, uh, sorry, parallelogram RSTU. So this is a parallelogram, it means opposite will be same length and parallel, and then opposite here will be sama panjang and parallel also. Z is a moving point. So if you look at the diagram, it's RSTU. But Z is not in the diagram because Z is a moving point. So Z is the locus that I have to draw later. Which distance is always equal from line RS and ST? Which of the following represents locus Z? RS and ST. The answer is US. So B is the answer. Okay. For students that understand locus, it will be very easy for them. Okay. But for students yang tak, tak tahu macam mana nak buat locus, yang tak Apa, ta, ta tau, then it will be very difficult. Okay, I will just explain to you here. So let's talk about locus. The first type of locus is they will give you satu point. Second type of locus is they give you two points, right? And then the third type of locus is they will give you satu line, okay? And then the fourth type of locus is they will give you dual line. And the fifth type of locus is they will give you dual line, but the two lines looks like this. Right, and then the sixth type of locus is they will give you uh, it's special a bit lah. It's like they give you A, B, C, D like that, and then they will give you something like uh, okay, this should be D, and then let's say this one is like uh, uh, okay, let's just draw some lines here, okay, like that, and then they will say something like X, A equals to A, B, something like that, okay, let's discuss what are these six types of locus. If you can remember all this, you can do all the locus question. Okay. The first type of locus is they will mention from satu point. Let's call it A lah, right? This one let's call it A B. This one let's call it uh A B also. This one let's call it A B C D. This one let's call it A B C. This one I should call it D actually. So, when we do locus, uh, we actually don't need to read at whatever at, in front. We just have to take out from sepal. If they say from satu point, uh, it means it's type number one. And if it's type one, what you do is you draw a circle. Yeah. If the locus is from A, then you just draw a circle. But how big I have to open the compass? Okay. When I draw the circle, how big? Okay. Okay. Don't worry. The question will tell you how big. Yeah. Because the question will tell you. Uh, draw locus X so that it's 3 cm from A. Then you open 3 cm and then draw. Eh? It means you don't have to worry about the radius the question will give you. Okay, type number two, punya locus question is they will give you from A and B because it's two points, right? 
So if they say from A and B, what you do is you will potong half, potong middle. If they got put two points, potong middle. But if the point is like this, then you potong like this, huh? right? Just cut it in the middle. Then what about if uh, they say from AB? Uh, from AB means from satu garisan, then what you do is you draw two lines. Satu atas, satu bawah. But how far, how, fur how further apart is the lines? Don't worry. The question will tell you. They will tell something like, oh, 3 cm from AB. Then what you do is like, you just measure 3 cm, draw satu line, measure 3 cm, draw satu line. Right? It means the question will tell you how, how many cm. Okay? Because if they don't tell you, then you can't draw the locus. Okay, next one, question four. This one, they will tell you from A, B, and C, D. From A, B, and C, D. Because it's two lines, right? And what you do, you just cut it in the middle. Okay, but of course, if the two lines is like this, then you cut like that, right? So just cut it in the middle. And then the fifth type is also, type number five also, two lines, but the line is like this, right? It's like a V shape. And then what you do is you will cut them in the middle. So yeah, just cut it like this, all right? And that will be the answer. Okay, but you have to use, uh, how to say? You have to use compass actually. Because sometimes it's very difficult to, because if you are doing paper two, and if they never give you any square grid, right? And if they never give you any square grid, it's very hard to, uh, how to say, potong it in half. So you will use compass. You will chuchot here, look at sini, look at sini, and then chuchot sini, look at sini, chuchot sini, look at sini, and then join, right? If they never give square grid, lah. but if they give square grid, it's actually very easy to draw the line. Because if they give you square grid, you can, just count how many kota and just agak agak you know where's the middle already. Okay, last type of locus is type number six. They will give you something like this and then they will mention something like X A equals A B. So for this type of look uh this type of question, you need to look at the soalan, okay, and then you focus on this and you will have to see which point is not in the diagram. So A B C D is in the diagram. But the soalan says x a equals a b. So which point is not in the diagram? Point x. So point x is not in the diagram. It means uh, x is the locus. x is the locus. x is the one I need to draw. That's why it's not in the diagram. Right? And then we just focus on a equals a b. Because x the other dalam diagram. So kita tak tengok. So we just focus on a equals a b. Can you see which one repeat here? A repeat, right? A repeat means a will be the center. Center of circle. A will be the center of circle. And then A, B will be the radius. It means what you do, you will use your compass again. You choose out the guy A because A is the center. And then you open your compass until here and then draw a circle. Draw a circle, right? But of course, the full circle is like this. But you don't have to. You just have to draw within the diagram. Okay? So yeah. So type number one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can half out all this type of locus question. You can do all of it, right? Let's go through one more time. When we do locus question, don't need to breed everything in front. Just tengok dia kata from sepal. If dia kata from A, means from satu point, satu, just draw a circle. If they say from A and B, means from dual point, you cut it in middle. But I want you to see the difference. Huh? This one is from A and B. This one is from A, B. It's not the same. Huh? From A and B means two points. From A, B means one line. So it's like different one. Huh? Okay, from A, B, one line means you will draw two lines. Huh? Okay, but don't worry. They will tell you how many CM they want you to draw. Like how many cm you have to, how to say? The gap is how many cm they will tell you. And then what about type number four? They will give you from A, B, and C, D. This is, they bagi two lines. Okay, and then you just cut it in the middle. And then fifth type is they give you like a V shape, just cut it in the middle also. Six is they give you something like this. And then you see which one yang tak ada dalam diagram, you jangan tengok yang tu. And then the one that repeats is the center. And then the other side will be the radius. Okay, I think I explained the whole concept of locus already. Now we can do this question. Now, let's see what it says. Z is a moving point, means it's a locus. Uh, locus is moving point, means locus. Locus is about moving point. Eh? Which distance is always equal from line RS and SD? Which of the following represents locus Z? You don't have to read all this. Because when you're doing locus question, these are not important. We only care about this. From RS and SD, you tell me. Type number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which type of locus question is this? RS and SD. RS and ST, RS and ST, not type number one, because type number one is only from satu points saja, not this one, because this one is just A and B, right? This one is RS and ST, so definitely not this one. Is it from AB? No, no. It's actually type number four and type number five. Because type number four and type number five, they are both consist of two lines, right? So RS and ST. So let's go to the diagram and cari RS and ST. So RS is this one. 
ST is this one. So can you see a V shape? So if it's V shape, which type is definitely type number five. So I have to cut it in middle. So when I cut it in middle, definitely is the US, the guy son. Right? It will be straight one. It will not be like curve, curve like that one. So the answer is B. La. That's why the B is the answer, US. Understand? Huh? But what if it's type number four? You will also cut it in middle. Okay? It's just that if it's type number four, it's like a like a long kang. Like a long kang shape, you just cut it in the middle, right? Okay, but if it's the long kang is like this, then you cut like that. But type number five is like it's a V-shaped one, but you also cut it in the middle. Okay, it means for type number four and type number five, you will cut it in the middle. It's just that the the way they garris is a little bit different. Like this is uh the line the, for type number four, the line is like this. For this one is the type is V shape. Okay. Okay, I spend so much time talking about this, but I hope you add, you how to say you learn something from it and you how to say you can remember this lah. Actually, I explained this so many times already in my scholar agama video. Also, I explained Kelantan paper. Also, got come out locals. I also explained. So I I like, I explained this for many times already. Actually, okay, but yeah, I explain one more time for you lah. Okay, let's continue. Thirty two. Which of the following polygon can be used to form a tessellation? I think this soalan ah, they meant regular tessellation. So I think you have to change the question. Regular tessellation, okay? And I'll tell you the answer straight away. It's C, okay? Because uh, polygon that can form regular tessellation is equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle. And then you can also say regular hexagon, regular hexagon. And then one more is square, all right? So these three shapes are the only three shapes that can use to form a regular tessellation. Okay, first of all, what is tessellation? Tessellation is a pattern. It's a pattern of recurring shape. Recurring shape means repeating shapes. Okay, but they cannot have empty space. So no empty space and no overlap. No empty space, no overlap. Okay, but you can use a bunch of different shapes to form the tessellation. Like for example, you don't necessarily have to use one shape. You can combine a octagon with a square or something like that. Like you can convert, combine different shape. But since this question, they are asking which of the following polygon. So we can assume that they are asking which shape can form the tessellation by itself. So regular heptagon cannot. Okay, he cannot. Okay. Regular pentagon also cannot. Okay, I'll just explain why. Eh? Because let's say it's a regular pentagon, means polygon yang lima side yang sama panjang. Let's say I, I put another pentagon here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And then let's say I put another pentagon here. Okay, wait. How I should position this pentagon? Maybe like, okay, because this one is like that, right? So maybe like this, like this, like this. Okay, as you can see, uh, I cannot form actually because I will end up having this gap here and I cannot fill this gap with pentagon. Yeah, you just can't, right? The only way uh, for the polygon to form a tessellation by itself is either it's an equilateral triangle Okay, because equilateral triangle, uh, you can keep on stacking it like this, right? And eventually, it will just, yeah, you, you, you get the idea. Uh, and you will get like a tessellation. You will not get any empty space, right? And then why regular hexagon also can? Because uh, if you look at this regular, did you see it forms a, forms a hexagon? Yeah, so actually regular hexagon also can form a regular tessellation and square also uh, because all four sides same, right? Uh, isosceles triangle... It can form a tessellation, okay? But since the question is asking regular tessellation, so D is not the answer. Regular means it has to be sama panjang. That is why I add the word regular here because if I don't put the word regular here, it means there's no answer already because isosceles triangle can actually form tessellation also because I've seen, I've seen isosceles triangle forming tessellation. Yeah, I've seen tessellation that look like, look like this, okay? Uh, it means like you can form Translation using isosceles as well. So I think the question uh, they are they should how to say write more specific regular translation. Okay. So if regular, then yeah, C is the answer. And I want you to remember only these three polygon can form regular translation. Okay, only these three. Okay. Okay, hope you understand. Uh. Okay, number 33. Diagram 12 shows point R is marked on the Cartesian plane. Okay, this point R is the coordinate is given. Calculate the value of theta. So I want to find this theta. Okay, if I want to find this theta, first thing first is, ada tak dia cakap unit circle dekat soalan? Did they mention unit circle? No. If they got mentioned unit circle, then you can 
write CS here. It means cost data equals to this, sign data equals to this, but they never mentioned. So you cannot use, you cannot write CS, right? And also, by the way, if unit circle, uh, the panjang of this line will be one because the radius will be one. But they never mentioned. So I cannot use that method. I cannot do cost data equals to this and then shift cost 0 0.83 cannot. I cannot use that method. I have to use another method. So I will take out this right angle triangle. Okay. So this will be 90 degree, right? Uh, yeah, this will be 90 degree. And since the X coordinate is 0 0.83, it means the panjang here is 0 0.83. And then the Y coordinate is negative 0 0.75, but I only want the panjang. So if this is 0 0.75, this should be 0 0.75. But I will not write the negative because I only focus on the length. Okay, the negative is just because they have drop bawah. Eh? So we can actually find the hypotenuse by using Pythagoras theorem, but I won't do that. I won't do that because it doesn't help. What they want is the theta. So the theta is from here to here. Okay, you can already tell your theta is not a normal angle. It's not a quadrant one angle. And it's not a quadrant two angle. And it's not a quadrant three angle. It's actually a quadrant four angle because it's like more than 270 but less than 360. It means this angle is in between 270 and 360. That's why it's a quadrant four angle, right? So how can we find the value of theta? Okay, let me scroll to satu soalan yang saya buat tadi. Do you remember other satu soalan? Ah, here is this. Do you remember this question? They asked me to find tangent theta. And my theta is outside the blue color right angle triangle, right? And how I explain it just now, you take the reference angle to determine opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Because when your angle is outside, uh, you cannot determine the opposite adjacent hypotenuse. You have to use the reference angle to determine opposite adjacent hypotenuse and then find the tangent theta. Then only you check whether you need to tamar negative or not, depending on where is the quadrant of the real of the actual angle. So I hope you understand. Now I come back here. Tell me now, your angle is inside the right angle or outside? Outside, right? So if it's outside, you have to take the reference angle. It means the reference angle will be here. And why the reference angle will be here? Because if it's a quadrant 4, to get the reference angle is 360 minus theta. That's how you get the reference angle for quadrant 4. So that when, when you take 360 minus, this is the reference angle. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to call it x. Okay? So now what I do, now what I can do is I can find this theta uh, no, I can determine the opposite adjacent hypotenuse already. So the pan, the angle, we call it opposite. The pan 90, we call it hypotenuse. And then yani kita panggil adjacent. And now I'm trying to find angle. Right? I'm trying to find angle. So we actually need two panjang. Right? Because when we use this formula, tangent theta equals to opposite over adjacent, sine theta equals to opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta equals to adjacent over hypotenuse, we actually need three, there's three slot. And if I want to find theta, I need to have two panjang, okay? Both panjang kena ada. And the two panjang I have here is O and A. That is why I will not use sine, I will not use cos, I will use tangent, okay? Because I have the O and I have the A. Of course, you can also use Pythagoras theorem to find H and then use sine, ataupun use cos, I can also. But I will not do that because it's like very slow if I do it like that. Okay, so I will just straight away use tangent and I will just write tangent theta equals to opposite over adjacent. So 0 0.75 is the opposite, adjacent is the 0 0.75. Eight, three, right? Now, I want to ask you, is this correct? Is it correct to write like this? Hmm, is it correct? Tangent theta equals to this. Let me think. Do I have to add negative? No, right? Because... Yeah, no need. No need to add negative because I'm only focusing on the panjang only. So tangent theta equals to yeah, 0 0.75, 0 0.83. So now I can just shift tangent. Okay, because tangent equals and then zero, uh, just press this. Uh, 0 0.875, 0 0.83. Okay. So now, hey, actually I need to tamar negative. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I need to tamar negative? Because the... Tangent theta, uh, because add sugar to coffee, right? And this angle is in fourth quadrant. So uh, if it's in fourth quadrant, uh, the only cost positive. So if tangent, uh, I need to add this negative. Yeah, because your real angle is actually quadrant four. 
I'm I'm only using the reference angle to get the value. So I need to check the real qu the quadrant of the actual angle, which is quadrant four. That's why I have to add negative. Yeah. So nasi bayi saya ada tambah. Okay. Now I have to tekan the shift tangent lah because the tangent have to move to the other side become tangent inverse. But the negative don't tekan please. Okay. I teach in my class also. I always scold my student. I always said don't tekan negative. Don't tekan negative. Don't tekan negative. Huh? Because the negative only indicates quadrant. Don't tekan the negative. Okay, just tekan shift tangent, bracket 0 0.75, divide 0 0.83. Get the reference angle first. So I get 42.10. But this is not the answer. This is not the theta. You don't write theta here. You write the RA. What is RA? Reference angle. It means this is the angle towards X. It means this 42.1 is just this angle here. To get the real angle, I have to pusing, right? Because now tangent negative. Right, so add sugar to coffee. If tangent positive is one and three, but tangent negative is two and four, but I already know my angle is in quadrant four, not quadrant two, because because from the diagram I can see it already. So uh, to get the quadrant four answer, I will take three sixty. Three sixty, which is one circle, minus with the reference angle forty two point one. So your real angle is three sixty minus answer. So just press. I get 317.89. Uh what uh 90 la 317.90. But the answer is all in degree minute. So you can use the degree minute button. You can press this button. It, it looks like this. Right? Just press this in your calculator and then it will change to 317 degree. Okay, 53 minute or 54? 54 minute because your calculator gives you 317 degree 53 and then 54.88. And I I got mentioned before in class, if this number behind is more than 30, you have to plus one here. And if this, if this number is 60, you have to plus one in front. Okay, So that's why 54 is more than 30. That's why the answer is 317 degree 54 minute. But if one day this number is 60, you have to plus one here, become 318. Okay, But this one no need. Lah. So the answer is C. Right? So hope you understand. But I want you to know, uh, if you're doing paper 2, your working is very important, right? And you have to make sure you write down the answer for quadrant 2 as well. Because quadrant 2 is also one of the answer. And if they don't want the quadrant 2, then only you write rejected. But since this is paper 1, so my working is like, I just, yeah, I just, I want to uh, do fast. That's why yeah, I just do a bunch of 2. But there's actually another answer for this, which is in quadrant 2. Okay? But we ignore that answer because yeah, they want quadrant 4. Okay? So, yeah. Let's continue 34. This is logical reasoning. State the contrapositive of the statement. Contrapositive means I have to write if not Q, then not P. Right? And what is not what is P? What is Q? Okay, if you look at the original statement, it says if x equals 5, then x plus 1 equals 6. It means this one, the in front one, this one, I underline, I'll call it P. This one I underline, I call it Q. Okay. And there is an another there is a other name for P. We call it antecedent antecedent and there's another name for q we call it consequent in bahasa melayu antijadian and akibat okay in english is antecedent consequent in bahasa melayu antijadian and akibat and i want you to know this right uh, i want you to know this okay now it says say the correct positive so i have to do if not q it means i have to do negation here x plus one not equals to six right then not p it means x not equals to five so a b c d which one is this uh, wrong. B. This one, no. This one, no. Yeah, B is the answer. So, yeah, that's all. Lah. Nothing much. Okay, 35. Let's go. Given that set L is factor of 16, set M is perfect square less than 30, list all the set of uh, L intersect M. So, let's list down all the elements for set L. Factors of 16 means what? It means you have to think about what number can the 16 divided by. So, 16 can divide by what? Okay, I will do it like this. I will write 16 and then I will write what times what is 16. So, 1 times 16 is 16. 2 times 8 is 16. 4 times 4 and that's all. So, the factors of 16 will be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. These are all factors of 16. It means oh, these are all numbers yang 16 boleh bahagi. Okay. Okay, next one is set M perfect square less than 30. <coughs> oh, by the way. If the soalan got give you universal set, ah, you have to make sure all the elements you write here kena ada dalam universal baru boleh tulis. Kalau tak ada dalam universal, tak boleh tulis. But since this question, they never give you universal, you will just write all. 
Yeah, all the factors of 16. Okay, but if you've got universal set, you have to check whether these numbers could other that dalam universal kalau tak ada tak boleh tulis. Yeah. Okay, what is perfect square less than 30? What is perfect square? 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square. <coughs> 4 square. And then 5 square, 6 square. So if you press this in your calculator, you'll get 1, 4, 9, 16, 5 square is 25, 6 square is 36. So perfect square less than 30. All these numbers that you get here, these are all perfect square. So less than 30 punya perfect square is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. 36 cannot because it's more than 30. So these are all perfect square. Now I want to list elements L intersect M. This symbol is called, is called intersect, right? Intersection. Ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu, persilangan. So persilangan means you choose the same elements ataupun the element that repeats in L and M. So what are the common yang, element yang sama yang ada dalam L dengan M? 1, 1, 4, 4, 16, 16. So the answer is B. Okay? That's the answer. Okay, let's continue. 36. A complete undirected graph will be formed based on the information below. So this is the vertex PQRST and these are all the degree of each vertex. Which of the graph represents those information? What does it mean by dp equals 4? It means the degree of vertex p is 4. And what is degree? Degree means uh, how many lines passes through this vertex. So if I say degree of p is 4, uh, it means there will be 4 lines that passes through p. So let's see a, b, c, d. What is the degree of vertex p in a? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So yeah. This one, P also, 1, 2, 3, 4. So yeah, this is also possible to be an answer. This one, how many lines passes through P? 1, 2, 3. So we know C wrong already. And then this one, what is the degree of P? 1, 2, 3, 4. So yeah, this is also possible. It means uh, if the graph got loop, uh, the loop will actually count it as 2 degree. Loop is actually 1 edges. When we count H, is actually considered 1 edge. But when we're counting degree, we actually count it as 2 degree because it's 1 in, 1 out. One going in, one going out. So a loop is like two degree. Okay, it's one edge but two degree. Okay, two degree and then three, four. Okay, so now we look at the, we check the next one. Degree of vertex Q is two. It means there will be two lines passing through Q. So two lines passing through Q. So Q, betul tak? Dia degree two for this one. Yep, correct. What about here? The degree also two? Yep, this is correct. What about here? Yep, also two, so this is correct. Yang C tak payah tengok sebab saya sudah tahu salah. Next one is degree of R is three. Let's check. Degree of R is 3. Is it true here? R, 3 line passing through R. 1, 2, 3. Yep, betul. What about here? R, 3 also. Yes. R, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this one wrong already. So it's either A or B. Now we check this one. Degree of vertex X is 4. S has the degree has to be 4. So, adakah ada 4 line? Okay, the other loop. Loop means we count it as 2 degree. But it's considered 1 edges. Eh? 1 edge, but we count it as 2 degree. So, 2 degree in uh, for the loop and then three four so yeah this is true what about here this one the degree of vertex s is only two only because there's two lines so this is wrong lah, because it says here got four right so a is the answer okay and if you look at the last one degree of vertex t is one yeah it's also correct yeah so a is the answer so make sure you know what is degree okay and how you and make sure you know how to find degree okay okay 37 which of the following is true monthly expenses categorical Categorical, numerical, numerical. Okay, let's understand what is, let's try to understand categorical data and numerical data. What is categorical data? What is numerical data? Categorical data means uh, when you get the data, the data is can be categorized. It can be categorized. Whereas numerical data is when the data is in numbers. Okay, because it's numerical, it's in numbers, right? So I'll give you an example. Monthly expenses. When you do a survey on monthly expenses, the data you will get will be in numbers, right? Because expenses is like RM. So definitely the data comes in numbers. So this one is a numerical data. What about weather temperature? Let's say you do a survey, you do a research on temperature. The data you will get is definitely will be numbers. 37 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Celsius. Everything is in numbers. So it's numerical data as well. Height of students. When you do a survey on the height of students, the data you get, will definitely be in numbers, right? Because height is like 170 cm, 175. So it's also numerical. But favorite drinks, if you do a survey and you ask a bunch of students what are their favorite drinks, you will not get numbers. You will get Milo, soft drink, okay, coffee, tea, 
those th those type of answers. So these are called categorical data. Okay, it's categorized. Okay, so that's why which of the following is true? I'll just check it. And okay, wrong, uh, wrong numerical. Ah, C is the answer. Okay, because C is true, right? Okay, and then D also, yeah, it's not correct. So I hope you understand what is categorical and what is numerical. Okay, okay, thirty-eight. Let's go. The mean of a set of data three n two fourteen seven and two n plus two is n. Okay. So n is the mean, eh? the mean is n. If each value of the data means every value, eh? each value means every value of data is multiplied by three and then subtracted by five, the new mean is nine. Find the value of eh, m and n. Okay, if I were to do this question, eh, I will do it fast. So how I'll do it is the new mean is 19, right? The new mean is 19, but the new mean is after I take every value multiplied by 3, subtracted by 5. So, uh, I can let the old mean become x. And what happens is, when I take the x, which is the old mean, multiplied by 3, subtracted by 5, I will get 19. Because, uh, if the old data, I take all value times 3 minus 5, then uh, my mean answer for my new data uh, will also be times 3 minus 5. That is why I can do it like this. So I can cari balik very quickly to find the x. x is the old mean. I just take 19 uh, plus 5 and then divide by 3. So I will get 8. Right? It means uh, the x is 8. The old mean is 8. And now I can find my m and n easily by using... Eh? The answer is D. Lah. Because they already said the mean for the old data is n, right? And if you look at A, B, C, D... The N is only the D answer, so this is the answer. Okay, okay this is the fast method. Lah. But if you want me to do the slow method, can also. Okay, the slow method is like this. I will write, I will do like this. 3N plus 2 plus 14 plus 7 plus 2N plus 2 divide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals to N. Okay, but you cannot do this because you don't have the, uh, how to say, the M and N, right? So what you do is, you have to uh you have to take the new mean 19 plus 5 and then divide 3 which is 8 and then the uh the end you will get uh 8 right and then you do like that, like that, like that, like that and then do all this like, and then like, but I don't want to waste your time like, because like you already know the answer already right so even if you do it like this also you will get the same answer 8 yeah so I think I'll just explain fast. Lah. But I do want to mention one thing. Eh? A lot of students will forget about this, right? If each value multiplied by 3, subtracted by 5, then the mean will get affected the same way. Doesn't matter plus, minus, times or divide. The mean will be affected the same way, whether it's plus, minus, times or divide. But for range, va uh, interquartile range, variance and standard deviation, they will not get affected the same way. Because uh, if you take the all the value in the data, plus or minus, uh, it will not affect, it will have no changes on this. If you plus minus la, on these four. Okay, these four, we call it measures of dispersion. Means is a measure of central tendency. That's why the mean will be affected the same way. But for range, in the quarter range, variance standard division, it will not get affected if I take all the value, I plus minus. But times divide, it will affect. Okay, so if let's say this question, if each value is multiplied by 3, my range, my new range will be the old range times 3. My interquartile range will also be the old interquartile range times 3. And then standard division also take the old one times 3, but the variance have to times 3 square, right? Uh, this is how you do if they ask for measures of dispersion, range, interquartile range, variance, standard division. But for mean, uh, mean, yeah, mean it will be affected the same way. If uh, times time 3 minus 5, the mean also times 3 minus 5. Okay, but the measure of dispersion is the is a little bit different, and I I want you to make sure you know this. Huh? this comes out also a few times in the trial paper. I see it a few times already. Okay, anyways, let's continue. Thirty nine. There are hundred sweets and some lollipops in a jar. So I'm just gonna draw a tree diagram. Sweets, lollipop. Sweets got hundred. Okay, so I'll just write hundred here. Lollipop, they just never say it, so I'll just say X lah, eh, because I don't know. The probability of lollipop being randomly selected from jar is 1 over 5. Formula for probability is like this. PA equals to NA over NS. And the A can be anything, right? So since they say probability is 1 over 5, but this is probability of what? Of lollipop. So I have to put number of lollipop, which is X, divide total, which is 100 plus X, because the total number of sweets is... Uh, the total number is 100 plus X lah. Calculate the number of lollipops means calculate X lah. 
And how to do it? Well, just 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 simplify this thing. Okay, we have single fraction on this side and single fraction on the other side. And when we have single fraction on both sides, we can darab silang, cross multiply. 1 times 100, 100. 1 times x, x equal 5 times x, 5x. Plus x move there become minus 5x minus x is 4x equals 100. So x equals to 100 divided 4, 25. C is the answer. And they never ask for total. Huh? They ask for number of lollipop. So number of lollipop is x, which is 25. Okay, finally, we are at the last question. This is matrix. Find the value of h and k. So I think if I am you, uh, I will take this matrix and this matrix I darab. After I darab, I compare my answer with this. So let's write down 2h642. This is a two row, two column matrix. This is 1k. So this is two row, two column. This is two row, one column. And you want to darab these two matrix, right? They can only darab if this number and this number same. If not same, cannot darab. So this one boleh darab lah, sebab sama. And then you left with two one. That is how your answer, that that would be how your answer look like. Your answer will look like this, two times one, which is two row, one column. Means satu nombor atas, satu nombor bawah, macam ni lah. And when we darab matrix, remember this, we have to take horizontal times vertical. And then it, let's say this one is A, B, C, D. You have to, you must take A times C, B times D. And it always has to be horizontal times vertical. So, can I take like this, that up like this? Cannot. If you do like this, wrong already. Remember, it has to start with horizontal times vertical like this. And remember, it's A times C, B times D. It means 2H times 1. And then siapa yang kena times K? 6 yang kena times K. Right? And if there's nothing in between, just put a plus there. And then now we, call, we, re, we repeat the same process, but this time with... The 4, 2, and the 1K. So horizontal times vertical, 4 times 1, and then 2 times K. Alright? And then nothing in between means plus. So you will get something like 2H plus 6K, and then here you get 4 plus 2K. Alright? So this is your final answer, and you can compare this with the 8, negative 10. Right? Because they mentioned before, this times this is 8, negative 10, right? It means this whole thing can compare with 8, negative 10, 8, negative 10. Alright? And how can we find H and K? We can just compare atas sama dengan atas, bawah sama dengan bawah. So 2H plus 6K will be equals to 8 because atas and atas must be sama and then bawah and bawah must be sama. So 4 plus 2K equals negative 10. This one we cannot do first because it has two unknowns. But this one we can do first. So we just spin that a bit. 4 when you move there become minus. So negative 10 minus 4. You will get 2K equals negative 14. Use your calculator. And then negative 14 divide 2 which is negative 7. So you know uh, you know B is wrong. D is also wrong. So it's either A or C, right? So I think I have to ganti masuk the negative 7 inside here. Okay. Uh, okay. So it becomes 2H plus 6K equals to 8. And then the K negative 7, just put it in. And then now we press calculator. Lah. Okay. This is not 6 minus 7. Lah. This is 6 times negative 7. So make sure you tekan 6 bracket negative 7. It's times, not minus. And then it equals to 8. And then 2H equals to 8 plus 42, which is 50. Okay, there's not enough space. I'm just going to write here. Lah. So it is 2H equals to 42 plus 8 is 50. And then you just press 50, divide by 2, cut, cut, left with 25. So H is 25. So definitely A is your answer. Lah. Yeah, I'm done with this paper. Hope this video helps. Harap membantu. See you next video. Bye-bye.